Dzień dobry, witam Państwa bardzo. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, a very warm welcome on this rainy morning. It's rather chilly outside, but we'll make this day very warm. Damian Urbańczyk is my name, and it is my pleasure to host this meeting, Horizon Europe. Europe, the horizon of possibilities. And gentlemen from rainy Warsaw, Poland. It is quite cold outside, but the, the atmosphere during our conference is going to be hot. My name is Damian Urbańczyk, and it is my pleasure to host the Horizon Europe launch conference entitled Europe, the horizon of possibilities. Chciałbym z tego miejsca podziękować let me thank for the honorary patronage to the Ministry of Labour and Technology and the honorary patronage of the Minister of Education and Science. Ministry of Development, Labour and Technology and the Minister of Education and Science for their honorary patronage. Szanowni Państwo. Ladies and gentlemen, Horizon Europe 2021-2027 is an ambitious programme in terms of scientific research and innovation that will replace Horizon 2020. Its budget stands at around 95.5 billion euros. Horizon Europe 2021-2027 is an ambitious research and innovation program that will replace Horizon 2020 with a budget of approximately 95.5 billion euro. I must say it sounds really impressive. Ja muszę przyznać, że to brzmi naprawdę Imponująco. Drodzy goście, czas teraz na otwarcie konferencji. Now let's open the conference. Our opening session. As you might have known, we're going to have four speakers opening our conference, and they are Jarosław Gowin, Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Development, Labour and Technology, Maria Gabriel, EU Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth, Przemysław Czarnek, Minister of Education and Science, and Wojciech Kamieniecki, Director of National Centre for Research and Development. And right now, it is time we gave the floor to the first person in our opening session, and he is Vice Prime Minister, Minister of Development, Labour and Technology, Jarosław Gowin. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to open officially this conference and be part of this. We say in Polish, widen horizons. This means, you know, develop, see more, know more, understand more, and achieve more. It's an idea behind the program Horizon for 2021-2027. It is an opportunity to finance ambitious research pro programs and innovation, but not only that, it's also an opportunity to include Polish uh, enterprises and scientific institutes in the network of the best European research centers. It's an opportunity for joint research and looking for new solutions, new products, and new services that are breakthrough solutions. So scientists and entrepreneurs become elements of a global chain of exchange of experience and innovation. These initiatives are a response to the current social and economic challenges. Let's take climate issues, smart cities, or fight against cancer. But there's more to it. Walter Isaacson, the American writer and biographer of great Americans starting with Lincoln, 
said, in 2021, breakthrough innovations and discoveries are no more the work of single man. They are the result of the work of interdisciplinary international teams. Innovation is most often created at the meeting point of different disciplines thanks to the collaboration of scientists from different disciplines and different environments. Horizon Europe is precisely such an effective platform for taking up this kind of endeavors. At the same time, it limits risks, starting with financial ones and organizational ones, risks that have always been part and parcel of really ambitious and breakthrough projects. This means that beneficiaries can really focus on achieving their content-related goals. Let's have a look at the wider context in Poland. In the recent time, many reforms and changes have been introduced that are supportive of innovation and research, like uh, the r reform of higher education, tax reliefs for research and innovation, and the Łukasiewicz Research Network launch. There is ever more money for research uh, and science, although it's still below what we aspire for, for our country, for our government and our society. Also, under the program for work and development implemented by my ministry, we support entrepreneurs who are willing to modernize and develop. This is what is under the third pillar of our program, that is development impulse. This is implemented through solutions such as, by way of example, support for market launches of innovative products or implementation of modern processes, technological processes in enterprises that are a result of uh, research and, and development studies, internal or outsourced. In this wide context, Horizon Europe is an opportunity to additionally strengthen the Polish ecosystem of innovation. Also, through the participation in such initiatives as the European Council for Innovation or the European Innovation Ecosystems. Ladies and gentlemen, in the Horizon 2020 program, that is, in the previous edition of Horizon Europe, the Polish participation in the whole budget was low. It was only 1.27%. While our input stood at 3.23%. This shows clearly that we as Poland paid in more than we got from the program, and this has to change. This has to be a joint effort of the government, of entrepreneurs, scientists, and such key institutions as the National Center for Research and Development. I am deeply convinced that the proportions will be different in this new program. I'm not saying that we want to get three times as much as we pay into the uh, common envelope. Yet, we would like these numbers to be at least comparable. Our beneficiaries in recent years have learned a lot. They gained a lot of valuable knowledge and contacts. So, in spite of the pandemic and uh, related restrictions, I am convinced that Horizon Europe will be an element in building a modern and competitive economy for the EU, and the Polish contribution to these endeavors will be growing and ever more significant. On an ending note, let me tell you that there is a discussion awaiting us in Europe, a discussion concerning development priorities. Some say we should limit the European budget for R&D. I want to say quite clearly, so that it's uh, clear in all our discussions in the EU, 
like recently, when we discussed the future of the European budget. On every opportunity, whenever possible, I stress strongly that resources for research and development, particularly in a crisis, particularly in a time when we need to push the economy on a growth path, that's when we cannot reduce these resources. There's around 95 billion euros devoted to Horizon Europe. Like the moderator said, I am deeply convinced that we need to do our best for these amounts earmarked to R&D should in the coming years be increased instead of decreased. And I assure you that in all endeavors taken up by Polish entrepreneurs and scientists to use the opportunities of Horizon Europe as much as possible, you can count on my support and uh, the uh, ministry that I had. Thank you very much for your attention. It's all about communication and cooperation, so it is my pleasure to introduce our next speaker, Maria Gabriel, EU Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture and Youth. Dear representatives of the Polish government, dear Polish research and innovation community, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure for me to address the Polish research and innovation community to launch the new European program that will support our collective efforts in the coming seven years. Horizon Europe has a budget envelope of 95.5 billion euros, corresponding to more than 13 billion euros per year in the next seven years. With such resources and a seven-year perspective, Horizon Europe is the most ambitious research and innovation program in the world. This ambition makes only sense if the research and innovation community in our laboratories, universities and industry are mobilized. The pandemics add to the challenges affecting also the research community. It is now urgent to rebuild the collaboration networks involving researchers from all across the European Union. There is still unequal access to the European RNI program some countries are lagging behind in terms of participation in European funded projects. Poland is part of the countries that will benefit from a number of support measures under a pillar called widening participation and strengthening the European research area. Horizon Europe has a wide scope and balanced structure. The first pillar, excellent science, addresses all domains of science through different channels especially the European Research Council and Marie Sklodowska Curie actions. The European Research Council will push the frontiers of science and the MSCA will make research careers more attractive and enriching. Poland has been performing very well in Horizon 2020 MSCA actions. We have supported about 1,100 Polish researchers from 170 Polish organizations participating. This represents a funding of nearly 80 million euros at the service of Polish researchers at every step of their career. The second pillar will support research and innovation initiatives with impact on global challenges, such as climate change, and on improvement of European industrial competitiveness. With the help of member states, regions and private stakeholders, the different clusters covering, for example, climate, energy and mobility, or digital industry and space, will ensure the uptake of top-of-the-art science. This pillar includes important instruments, such as partnerships involving member states and industry and the research and innovation missions. Missions will cover important topics such as fighting cancer, adaptation to climate change or keeping our soils healthy for food production. Finally, the third pillar focuses on fostering innovation in Europe 
especially when it comes to SMEs and startups. The European Innovation Council will support the development and deployment of high-risk innovations with a particular focus on breakthrough, market-creating and deep tech ones. In particular, I would like to mention the Polish project Sintoil, funded by the EIC. It has developed innovative processes to limit the usage of fossil fuel and minimize waste in the tire and rubber industry to make it greener. The European Institute of Innovation and Technology will complement this pillar, supporting innovation ecosystems in Europe through knowledge and innovation communities. 101 partner organizations and third parties from Poland are participating in these kicks with the goal to disseminate best practices and foster collaboration between organizations. Allow me to highlight UVERA, a project carried out in Poland, the winner of the 2019 EIT Health InnoStars Awards for its development of eco-friendly sun protection products from a natural compound produced by cyanobacteria. I strongly believe that with the help of Horizon Europe, Polish researchers and innovators will contribute decisively to the European recovery. Stay tuned and navigate through all the available information to maximize the chances to participate in Horizon Europe, including through the support of the excellent work of the National Contact Point Network. And let me invite you to the European Research and Innovation Days 2021 in June to share your views and expectations. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. We are grateful for this introduction. Since during our conference we are trying to promote education and knowledge, it is time we met our next speaker, Przemysław Czarnek, Minister of Education and Science. Thank you very much for uh, having me at this conference and uh, giving me the opportunity to deliver this message on this distinguished opportunity. Ladies and gentlemen, we convene at this exceptional uh, opportunity that is the inauguration in Poland of Horizon Europe. This is uh, the result of a long negotiation process of the European Union service, the, Euro the Polish administration and scientific research uh, uh, employees. The more happy am I that uh, we can, together with uh, the Vice Prime Minister, announce this new endeavour for the Polish science that will be implemented in the years to come. Horizon Europe, with the 95 billion euros budget, is completely incomparable with any other kind of national or international program. This enormous budget will, in the coming years, support the development of the Polish science and the best ideas for innovation. This huge budget is just a means and it should not um, divert our attention from what's really important, that is our goals. Horizon Europe is, for me, one of the most important instruments that we can use in looking for solutions, for challenges lying ahead of us. I mean solutions that will be really important for European and Polish science. I'm talking of challenges that, we, that are hot topics like demo demographics, changes in climate, uh, including the growth of role of technology, including artificial intelligence. The program as such will not grant answers uh, and solutions to these challenges, but it will provide resources for research and great interdisciplinary environment for collaboration among researchers and innovators. That's why the negotiation of this program was of such key importance. At this point, I would like to give my thanks to everybody who have been part of uh, this success. It would not have been possible without 
good co cooperation of uh, universities, research centers, the Polish Science uh, uh, Council, Łukasiewicz Network, researchers, entrepreneurs, our public administration partners, and others. Many thanks to Minister Govin, who started the whole discussion, my predecessor in this position. He laid the foundation for this success. Special thanks go to the Commissioner and the DG for Research and Innovation. You were tough negotiators, but at the same time you were open to our ideas, and it's thanks to your support that we have very good solutions for the Polish science in the package. This is a good sign for the implementation. The conclusion of the negotiation is just the end of a single stage of the negotiation uh, of the process ahead of us is implementation and wise spending of this huge envelope of resources to the benefit of our society and economy. This is a challenging task, but a very important one, particularly at this difficult time. We are all dealing with the outcome of uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. Horizon Europe can be a factor in reconstructing the economy and making it more competitive so that we can tackle better such challenges in the future. It is worth stressing at this point that we in Poland are strong believers in the development of science and innovation. Innovation is not a goal as such. It is a tool to better answer challenges concerning health, safety and better life. Science and innovation without the human factor cannot meet this goal connected with building a Europe based on values and well-being among our citizens. I am very happy that uh, we can fund all kinds of research, starting with uh, um, breakthroughs in mobility, technology, medicine and others. Also, full cycle of innovation can be financed through demonstrators of technology that can be the driving wheel of new reforms supported by the European Innovation Council. Horizon Europe will widely support two key areas, that is the creation and development of scientific research, scientific infrastructure, and researcher mobility. This is an absolutely unique construct that will draw talent not only from Europe, this is proven by research by champions of innovation to strengthen uh, achievements. Countries like Switzerland, Australia and others have from the beginning uh, wanted to be partners of this program, which opens doors to international cooperation. In this context, Polish science has a very clear goal when it comes to our participation in Horizon Europe. We want to have a share in projects financed from uh, Europa, Horizon Europe at something at least 3%, which would be around the amount that we pay into the budget of the program from Poland. If we meet that challenge, this would mean that every year Polish scientists would receive funds comparable to the total budget of uh, the National Center for uh, Research. So this is why it's such an important impulse for the development of science uh, in the EU. This is very, uh, very ambitious. Take bearing in mind that we only stand at 1.23% uh, share in the budget of the previous program. This is why we had such a long discussion concerning the uh, conditions for Polish scientists. There's also a number of solutions that have been prepared. They are part and parcel of the program. On the other hand, they are also within the national support program. Some of the most important uh, support measures are the following. Firstly, increased package of widening of participation directed uh, at some countries. You know some of these solutions and under this tool you can create new uh, research centers in collaboration internationally. I'd like to stress also that this package 
has been increased from 1 billion euro under Horizon 2020 to around 3 billion euro in Horizon Europe. This is three times more resources for Polish ideas in terms of striving for excellence. Another is mechanisms for friendly remuneration for scientists. These solutions provide premiums, bonuses for the best scientists. Also, through dialogue with the European Commission, we are at the last stretch of work that will provide an audit program for Polish universities. Solutions proposed under our Pact for the Active will also be um, accepted by those that finance uh, research in Poland, including the National Center for Research and Development, which will be very supportive of Polish research institutes. And the last worthwhile um, solution is geographical um, criteria. Horizon Europe is not a state-by-state -state, uh, budget, and yet, thanks to this solution, there's a higher possibility of financing good Polish ideas in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, like I said in the very beginning, effective use of uh, these resources under uh, Horizon Europe depends on our activity. I think that I can say that in the Polish government you have a strong partner in the negotiations with Brussels and other European capitals. We are at your disposal, but we expect you to respond positively in terms of wider application for the program. In the face of challenges before Poland and Europe, we cannot afford not using these resources. Once again, many thanks for having me at this conference. I am convinced that this is going to be a great opportunity to encourage scientists and new participants in the framework program Horizon Europe, and it will be an opportunity to come up with new ideas for the benefit of the uh, Polish scientific community. I, as the minister, support all kinds of forms of support for scientists. Employees of the ministry are at your disposal. They can be of help and support. Thank you for your attention. Many thanks for this opening speech. In speech. I've mentioned before that today we have four speakers opening our conference. And last but definitely not least, Director of National Center for Research and Development, Wojciech Kamieniecki. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to all panelists, speakers and participants of this conference inaugurating Horizon Europe in Poland. I'm very happy that uh, one of our guests is Commissioner Maria Gabriel, Commissioner for Digital Economy and Digital Society. With us are also Vice Prime Minister Jarosław Gowin and Minister Przemysław Czarnek. The Ministry of Development, Labour and Technology, headed by Mr. Gowin, and the Ministry of Education and Science, headed by Mr. Czarnek, are patrons of this conference. Welcome. With us are also panelists representing the European Commission, distinguished Polish experts and scientists. A warm welcome to all the participants, numerous participants, who are connected with us online. Such a big turnout means that there is a high interest in the new program, which is a good sign for the future. The National Center for Research and Development I have the pleasure of heading is the organizer of today's conference. But not only that, in the years to come, it will support Polish innovators, scientists and entrepreneurs wanting to be part of the new program Horizon Europe. Starting from November last year, under our Bureau for International Cooperation, a national contact point has been launched. Its activity can be bolstered through recognizable internationally governmental organization in the form of the National Center for Research and Development. This will allow for using the potential so far that has been 
within the national contact point, and also the potential of bilateral and international contacts. The national contact point will play a key role in the support of Horizon Europe. This is an, an inauguration of this product, project today, but we've been talking about its opportunities for a long time. I am convinced that information, advisory, and support for Polish innovators will be a factor in strengthening our participation in Horizon Europe compared to Horizon 2020. A lot about this has been said by my four speakers. You can also hope for our, you can count on our support at the National Center. The experience with the implementation of Horizon 2020 has proven how important it is to support innovators through the explanation of rules and uh, uh, conditions of, uh, of the program. I think this will be to the benefit of the support for Polish entrepreneurs and scientists, and they will reach for these European grants. I'm sure we are convinced that innovation is a driving wheel of development, and we are about to unleash a huge potential in the Polish economy and the Polish science. We live in a time of challenge, uh, speedy technological change, um, fears and hope. Uh, the pandemic, climate change, Green Deal, energy, artificial intelligence, I could go on and on. This is also a good time for bold decisions and a time to launch new breakthrough projects. For this, we need great ideas, knowledge, and being successful is always supported by experience. This means facing boldly the future and challenges, taking the risk of losing, which is a common element of all innovative projects. Polish Nobel Prize winner Maria Skłodowska Curie, patroning uh, to patron of this project, part of this project said, "Nothing in life should be feared; it should only be understood." And this is the kind of wise uh, courage that I wish for all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, the National Center for Research and Development wants to be a partner for all innovators. The success of Polish innovators under programs within Horizon Europe will be also our success. You can count on uh, current, ongoing information on our part and active participation, active involvement in filling out uh, forms and in other uh, and in other forms, I wish you successful competition and successful race for these resources. Ladies and gentlemen, I talked about courage, need for collaboration, information. Let me now end uh, by quoting Steve Jobs. He said, he talked about breaking through barriers, going beyond our limits, and building future. He said that it is our task to read what has not yet been written down. Let us aim high. We really stand chances to be very successful, and I welcome our great panelists and I invite you to listen to their speeches today, and I invite you to collaborate with the National Center for Research and Development, starting from tomorrow. Thank you very much. Right, thank you very much. We do appreciate your presence uh, here. Ladies and gentlemen, the conference, uh, the conference is entitled Europe, the Horizon of Possibilities. Uh, the title consisting of five words which embody our plans for the future. The future that we're going to discuss today during our meetings. But since we are going according to the schedule, our next presentation is going to take place exactly at 10 40. So I would like to right now invite you for the next presentation at 10.40.
Welcome back. In the beginning of our conference, I had a chance to say a few words about the Horizon Europe program itself. Right now, it is time we focused on new elements of the program and we got to know the presentation of Horizon Europe structure. I can see our next guest is with me right now, with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Julien Garrier, di Director of the Common Policy Center of the European Commission's Directorate General for Research and Innovation. Good morning. Bonjour, ça va? Ça va très bien. Merci. Good morning to all of you in Poland. And I'm delighted to be here with you, at least virtually. All right, I think we are ready to begin. The stage is yours. Thank you. I'd like to present to you a little bit the structure of Horizon Europe. Uh, we often say it's not a revolution compared to the current uh, or the past program, Horizon 2020. It's rather an evolution, uh, but still there are some novelties. So I would like to focus on three uh, main novelties also during my presentation this uh, morning. Uh, and those three novelties will be uh, the missions, uh, the European Innovation Council, and our new strategic approach to the programming of Horizon Europe. You heard uh, from our commissioner, Maria Gabriel, this morning that uh, Horizon Europe negotiations have been successfully concluded in December, politically, uh, with the Parliament and the Council. Polish authorities and stakeholders were key and have contributed significantly to this success. So I would like to, to thank you uh, for, for that. The, the main structure of Horizon Europe is based on three pillars. You have one pillar called Excellent Science, uh, which will support creativity and consolidate the role of Europe as the forefront of science and technological frontiers. This is fundamental research, and we will support researchers at all stages of their career in all scientific fields. Uh, we will have some curiosity-driven schemes, uh, such as the European Research Council, which allow European scientific communities to push forward science. The European uh, Research Council has become what we call our factory for Nobel Prizes. There are so many of them that have been supported by the European Research Council, and it has become an international reference in terms of support to researchers. Another important scheme that had been uh, mentioned in the previous intervention is the Maris Klodowska Curie actions. Uh, Bottom-up activities there will support the initial and lifelong training of our researchers, uh, which is particularly important to support the circulation of brains in Europe, uh, in particular at a time when uh, circulation of people is not that easy because of the current sanitary situation. Research infrastructures is another part of this first pillar, and those actions will ensure that we have the academic and industry infrastructures uh, so that um, our researchers, both private and public, will have access to state-of-the-art scientific equipment and services. This pillar is, I would say, largely based on uh, the previous uh, program, Horizon 2020. So there is no big uh, revolution there, uh, but there is a significant increase in budget uh, compared to um, Horizon 2020, more than 20% up, which is remarkable. Uh, pillar two is global challenges and European industrial competitiveness. This is more than half of our investment under Horizon Europe. Uh, so it's a, it's a very important pillar. It will support of collaborative research and innovation activities uh, to the EU policy priorities. So it's a much more top-down or directed um, uh, part of our program. We have six clusters there corresponding to the very um, uh, big priorities in uh, our socio-economical systems, uh, such as health, digital industry and space, climate, energy and mobility, agriculture, food and environment, civil security or cultural creativity and inclusive society. I will come back to that, uh, talking to you about the missions that we will develop there as a novel instrument. And pillar three is, uh, if you want, uh, another bottom-up uh, pillar supporting innovation. So you have pillar one for 
fundamental research, pillar three for innovation. This one is hugely increased in budget compared to the previous period, um, more than uh, uh, doubled. Uh, it includes in particular the European Innovation Council, which is a novelty and which I will come back uh, to in a, in a minute. And last but not least, we have transversal actions which will cut across the program on widening uh, on the European research area with the aim to bring uh, to the state of the art uh, level all uh, countries and regions in Europe in research and innovation and to facilitate uh, brain circulation, attract and retain talents in, uh, in Europe. Now let me focus on the novelties and I will start with the missions. Here it's a new instrument that we are using in particular in Pillar 2 uh, to implement our research and innovation uh, program. Missions are based on this concept that was developed um, in the 60s uh, in the US with a moonshot mission, Kennedy, saying that before the end of the decade, the US would land a man on the moon and bring him back safely to Earth. That was an inspirational objective uh, that talked to the minds of citizens across the US and much beyond, and that enabled research and innovation uh, forces to be mobilized and well beyond research and innovation, also all economic and uh, vivid uh, forces of society to be mobilized to achieve this objective. And we are trying to do the same now with five European missions in fields uh, that have been identified by European citizens themselves. Uh, and here we we wanted to talk to the minds of citizens, such as uh, the Moonshot mission in the 60s. So what we did is that we did not only consult them, as we usually do when we develop our public policies in Europe, but we sat together with them across Europe with a blank sheet of paper and reflected on what would be the objectives they wanted to achieve through these missions. And we identified five of them, one on cancer, four related to the green transition. Uh, I'll come back to, to these five ones in a minute. Uh, but this is quite remarkable in terms of citizens' engagement and the way that our public policies are developed. This is actually a source of inspiration also for the way we will be conducting the conference on the future of Europe in the next few months. So on, on these missions, the stick is that they will have a portfolio of projects uh, that will cut across all sectors of research and innovation, and that they will go much beyond research and innovation. They will be rooted in research and innovation in the sense that Horizon Europe will contribute to them, will fund research and innovation in those fields, but they will have also to be supported by other EU programs and by national and regional schemes and policies in order to actually deliver on their objectives. They will involve citizens and stakeholders all along the implementation and the monitoring and evaluation of those missions. The first one is adaptation to climate change. They have the idea is to work with 200 communities in Europe to exchange data and best practices and to set up 100 climate resilient demonstrators that can constitute models and that can be replicated across Europe uh, in order uh, to um, uh, manage climate risk and ensure that regions and local communities have access to improved warning systems and climate risk profiles. Then we have a mission on oceans in order to restore their health uh, and to ensure decarbonization of water, carbon neutrality of fisheries, shipbuilding industries. Uh, we want to have a kind of European uh, hydrosphere agency uh, that by 2030 uh, would be able to ensure the health of oceans, seas, as well as coastal and continental waters. There is one mission in the field of cancer in order to fight cancer at all its stages, uh, from prevention to uh, accompanying patients uh, in all kinds of cancer with the objective to save more than 3 million lives uh, in 2030 on a yearly basis. So that uh, would imply the establishment of a common European platform to fight against cancer and uh, other initiatives dedicated to the identification of genetic risk factors 
screening techniques and minimally invasive surgery. Then there is a mission on smart and carbon neutral cities with the objective to promote 100 climate neutral cities by 2030. So that would be an anticipation of our overall objective for 2050 to have a carbon neutral continent. Uh, and that's uh, something that would, of course, require the support of the chosen cities, the local authorities, the concerned countries. Uh, this is a very ambitious timeline, just a decade, uh, but we believe that could be that could be achieved through encouraging new forms of participatory governance, new economic and financing models, integrated urban planning and innovation management. And finally, uh, the last mission would be on soil, health and food to ensure that by 2030, 75% of our soils in Europe would be healthy and produce healthy foods. Uh, this involves tackling different um, negative consequences of human occupation of the territory, such as the artificialization of soils, the um, uh, use of fertilizers uh, that lead to pollution, degradation and erosion of so soils. Uh, key initiatives would include uh, the launch of uh, research and innovation dedicated to the study of soils, as well as uh, the creation of a network of innovative laboratories, living labs, as we call them, uh, involving civil society and encouraging member states to adopt a soil control program. So these missions, as you see, are very concrete. Uh, they have time-limited objectives, such as the one of Kennedy in the 60s. They speak to citizens because they answer some of their most pressing needs uh, and they would require to mobilize in order to, to deliver on their objectives, not only research and innovation, but well beyond a number of delivery mechanisms and policies that we want to bring together in synergy with our research and innovation program. I very much hope that we would be as successful as um, the Moonshot mission in the 60s. Uh, and um, this is uh, obviously a major novelty in Horizon Europe. The second novelty I'm going to talk about is the European Innovation Council. I told you about this rebalancing of the program towards a third pillar focused on innovation. The program for research and innovation overall, Horizon Europe, will increase the budget uh, that EU, the EU uh, com, um, allocates to, to um, funding in research and innovation by about 30% in constant prices compared to Horizon 2020. This is, of course, enormous. Um, uh, and that reflects the fact that research and innovation is today considered in Europe as the key to our future competitiveness as the key to get us out of this sanitary crisis by producing, elaborating the required vaccines, including against the variants, the, the therapeutics, uh, the diagnostics, uh, and that uh, it is also research and innovation that will enable us to get uh, to a climate neutral Europe in 2050 and to ensure the digital transition. So this consensus has resulted in a huge budget boost I repeat, 30% in constant prices uh, for Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, but within that program, we have rebalanced. We have increased all parts. We have increased, however, more the innovation part, doubling it, compared to the fundamental research part, Pillar 1, which has increased by a bit more than 20%. The reason for that is that we are very good at research in Europe, but we are less good at putting on the markets uh, the results of our research. So we want to fund through the European Innovation Council, a newly established structure, the startups in Europe that invest in breakthrough innovations and that we hope will be able to scale up, grow and um, uh, uh, give us the unicorns of tomorrow. If uh, the European Research Council is the factory of Nobel Prizes in Europe, we want to have our factory of unicorns with the European Innovation Council. The novelty there is also that uh, after a number of pilot projects and programs we have um, developed um, in the past few years, the EIC will support in the long term the scale up of those startups, not only through grants, 
our traditional support scheme, but also by taking a share in their capital, by investing in their capital, which is quite novel for the European Commission to do. And that would demonstrate our long-term commitments to those startups and enable them to grow along uh, the various stages of their development in Europe. So that's uh, a big novelty we count a lot on uh, to foster Europe's competitiveness in the future. And the third and last novelty I want to focus on is our more strategic approach. We've talked about the bottom up pillars, fundamental research, innovation, Pillar two, which represents the bulk of our investment, is the one that addresses uh, societal needs. And there we want to be more directive and ensure that Europe's funding into research and innovation will contribute to the maximum of its possibilities to the funding of, uh, uh, to, to the delivery of our political priorities, green and digital transitions, resilience, and overcoming the sanitary crisis. So what we've done is that for the first time, we've developed a strategic plan for Horizon Europe's implementation. This strategic plan starts from the top, from these big political priorities I've mentioned, and it identifies key strategic orientations for Horizon Europe that would enable it uh, to deliver uh, towards these political objectives. The four strategic orientations that have been identified in this strategic plan are promoting an open strategic autonomy by leading the development of key digital enabling and emerging technologies in Europe, ensure that we have the value chains here and that we steer the digital and green transitions through technologies and innovations. The second one is restoring Europe's ecosystems and biodiversity. The third one is making Europe the first digitally enabled circular economy. Uh, and uh, we will, uh, through that, transform our mobility, energy, construction and production systems. And the fourth one is creating a more resilient, inclusive and democratic European society. With these four key strategic orientations, we are then trickling this down towards uh, 32 uh, key objectives for our program, which themselves are translated into concrete actions and calls for proposals in the work programs of Horizon Europe. So this is a different approach, more strategic, more top-down, to programming our funding, uh, and this will result into, we, do, we hope, uh, a much more impact-focused program that will contribute considerably uh, to our political objectives. Now, with these uh, new features, uh, the missions, the European Innovation Council and the strategic approach, uh, what we want to do is to optimize the impact and the use of Horizon Europe with an investment that contributes to what our citizens, our stakeholders, our researchers and innovators are expecting. Uh, we still have to formally adopt in Brussels uh, the uh, program Horizon Europe, uh, but that will be done in the next few weeks by the Parliament and the, and the, and the Council. Uh, in the meantime, we have progressed in the preparation for the implementation of Horizon Europe. We have already adopted the strategic plan I was mentioning on the 15th of March. We have already adopted a number of work programs to implement uh, Horizon Europe. Uh, this includes the work program of the European Research Council, the work program of the European Innovation Council, and a uh, first very focused work program on research on COVID variants. Uh, this uh, means that we will we are able already to launch the first course for proposals. Uh, and as for the bulk of um, the program, the main work program, we are finalizing it now, uh, discussing it with member states and intending to adopt it uh, in uh, the first half of May. So very, very soon, meaning that most calls for proposals for 2021 will be launched already in May, June. That's virtually no gap in the implementation of the previous program, Horizon 2020, where we had the last call on the Green Deal uh, in September with a deadline in January. 
and which we are now um, uh, processing, and the new first calls of Horizon Europe that are coming up very, very soon. Now to conclude, uh, perhaps a few words on Polish participation in our program. If we look at the figures for Horizon 2020, and maybe because of uh, the name of the scheme, Maris Klodowska Curie, uh, the participation of Poland has been quite impressive with 400 participants in Maris Klodowska Curie actions. Uh, we have in total 2,600 participants from Poland in uh, Horizon uh, 2020, which is quite impressive. Um, a, a success story is that of uh, Narodowe Centrum Nauki, I'm not sure I pronounce it very correctly, uh, in a collaborative project of Horizon 2020 to promote international partnerships uh, for our European presence in quantum technologies, uh, which underlines how valuable uh, the transnational research and innovation supported uh, by Horizon 2020 was uh, with uh, the support and participation of uh, Polish actors. Under Horizon Europe, we very much hope that we will have even more Polish participants. We're increasing the budgets. Uh, we are making um, uh, an effort in, in all areas of um, the program and hope that uh, Polish uh, scientific communities, researchers, innovators will contribute to intensify the participation of Poland in the European Research Council, in the European Innovation Council and in collaborative research under Pillar 2. Uh, the, the participation of SMEs is very much encouraged, of industrial actors as well, uh, in order to uh, reinforce our competitiveness across Europe. Uh, we have um, uh, a number of fields where Poland is quite active already, energy research, transport, security sectors, uh, and the horizon uh, uh, Europe. We very much hope that we will see also other types of actors in other sectors from Poland participating and contributing to putting Europe at the forefront of technological scientific developments in the world. Thank you very much. Let me just start by saying that your Polish pronunciation is absolutely perfect. I do appreciate it. And uh, later I'm just going to say that I hope that any support and any cooperation is going to be fruitful in the years to come because there are many Nobel Prizes to be won yet. Thank you very much for this presentation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, uh, since for us, in order to provide you with all the necessary information, we need your undivided and full attention. Right now, we're going to make a short coffee break, so we're going to meet here at 11.25 for the launching debate. Ladies and gentlemen, we see each other here 11.25 for our launching debate.
Welcome after the coffee break. Ladies and gentlemen, the moderator of our launching debate in a recorded invitation to this conference said, quote, that National Contact Point is preparing for the beginning of the Horizon Europe program. They participate in de developing the work programs. They follow the created calendars of competitions. They analyze the results of Horizon 2020 in order to design an optimal training and workshop program. Why? Well, mainly because they are aware of all the opportunities and challenges. And these are the things we're going to discuss right now. Let me introduce the moderator, Magdalena Bem Andrzejewska, Director of National Contact Point, National Center for Research and Development. Good morning. I have the great pleasure and honor to moderate the launch okay. debate of today's okay. conference. Ladies and gentlemen, following Brexit, Poland stands as the fifth biggest member state of the European Union after Germany, France, Italy and Spain. Despite this, Polish teams performed much worse than the other top five countries in the previous framework programme Horizon 2020 and did so in many respects in terms of contracted funds, the number of grants, or overall success rate. Fifteen years after having joined the European Union and over 20 years after having acceded to EU framework programmes for research and innovation, Poland is still in 15th position as far as contracted funds and coordin coordinative functions in grants are concerned. It doesn't mean that we had no success. We have managed to increase our contracted funds by 85% in comparison with the seventh framework program. According to the latest statistics, we have obtained almost 820 million euro in Horizon 2020. We have performed clearly better in the second half of Horizon 2020 than in its beginnings. Poland is, of course, the biggest so-called widening country. Polish successful participation in the widening package of Horizon 2020 is definitely worth mentioning. 32 coordinations, including three teaming for excellence winners, delivered Poland 6.5% of the package budget. Importantly, we also received six Eracher grants and 18 twinning projects and we have played the role of the coordinator of the NCP networking project for widening. A few weeks before the formal launch of the new framework program, with its impressive budget and commitment to operate for another seven years, we meet in Warsaw to discuss the opportunities and challenges that are now visible on the horizon. Horizon Europe. Ladies and gentlemen, five eminent speakers have accepted my invitation. Mrs. Anna Panagopoulou, Director of European Research Area and Innovation of the European Commission's Directorate General for Research and Innovation. Mrs. Kinga Stanisławska, Member of the Advisory Board to the European Innovation Council. Professor Andrzej Jajszczyk, Vice President of the European Research Council. Dr. Piotr Dardziński, President of the Łukasiewicz Research Network. And Mr. Mateusz Gaczyński, Vice Director of the Department of Innovation and Development from the Polish Ministry of Education and Science. Thank you very much for joining us today. Given the state of play, as I have described it, let's initiate our discussion on a positive note. What do you think is the most promising novelty in the Horizon Europe program from the point of view of a widening country such as Poland? And I would like to ask Mrs. Panagopoulou to answer as the first speaker. Good morning to everybody. I hope you can hear me and see me well. I'm very pleased to be with you today, and I'm extremely happy that uh, uh, with your introduction, where uh, actually you is my life in the sense that you clearly said 
how successful has been already the I don't know, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Very well. Yes, yes okay. we can hear you. Okay. Sorry. How successful has been already the participation of Polish beneficiaries uh, to um, Horizon 2020 program in relation to FPSF? And indeed, that has been a fantastic increase. But uh, as you said, probably it's not enough. It's not enough because Poland is uh, the fifth member state of the Union. Uh, Poland is an important uh, um, uh, contributor to all the design and preparation of the Horizon Europe program. And Poland has much more potential that could be used in the next of the Horizon Europe program. Um, you, we always speak uh, about how it will be possible in the context of the next uh, uh, policies develop, uh, development uh, in uh, European research area, but also in particular in the context of participation to Horizon Europe to address uh, what uh, we we still what is still exist the innovation divide in Europe. How it's possible to reduce this innovation divide? How is possible the Horizon Europe program, which is new? possibilities provided under widening, but also across the framework program, would be used as a vehicle to reduce the innovation divide. After the very intense negotiations we had uh, with the Council and the Parliament, uh, uh, we managed to achieve collectively a much more increased participation uh, and uh, a contribution of the Horizon Europe budget for the widening country. 3.3% of the Horizon Europe budget will be dedicated and allocated to the widening countries through the widening and era work program. And this will provide the possibility not only to increase uh, the participation of the widening beneficiaries in this part of the program, but also to help them to increase their excellence to have more innovation capacity and would become more competitive to participate to the other Horizon Europe program, to Pillar 2, in particular, the global challenges, but also to Pillar 1, scientific uh, excellence, and also to Pillar 3, the European Innovation Council. We have observed over the last years that uh, Poland has been extremely successful in particular areas that they are important uh, uh, for research and innovation, for improving the research and innovation capacity, Maris Kodowska Curie. It has been very successful in the ICT area. It has been very successful also in the area of uh, moving for green uh, transition. So we expect this to come much more in the context of Horizon Europe. The three billion that will be allocated in the widening program is a unique opportunity for uh, beneficiaries coming uh, from Poland to participate uh, in the different instruments that you have been already very successful, teaming, twinning, era chairs, but also to benefit uh, from new possibilities that are established under the widening program, in particular, the possibilities in the context of the brain circulation, so a new instruments that we put in place, possibility in the context of transformation agendas for universities across Europe, and in particular in the widening countries, and also possibilities that they are providing in the, in the context of the new center of excellence that they are established as a new uh, initiative under the widening. But apart from that, there are the possibilities for participation to new consortia to be established under Pillar 2 of Horizon Europe with the HOPON, uh, a new instrument where beneficiaries coming from widening countries, they have the possibility to, con to connect and to be part of a collaborative research project selected under Horizon Europe um, Pillar 2. Even more, I would like to highlight the important role that uh, this NCP network in widening countries they are going to play and the advanced support they can provide to all the beneficiaries in preparing their proposals. And we also foreseen uh, uh, actions in the context of pre-checks proposals that they are prepared by widening country beneficiaries in order to ensure 
that what they provide is of high quality and it has more chances to uh, receive funding under Horizon Europe program. So a lot of new instruments that they will be in place. And in addition, the possibility to use the policy support facility, which has been an extremely important instrument and relevant for the widening countries, which is going to support and help the public administrations to address the necessary reforms and to improve the excellence in the RNI capacity system of the country. So these are important uh, areas that I see that Polish beneficiaries and the public administration of Poland could participate. And last but not least, as you will see today in the Info Day, there are plenty of opportunities where uh, the Polish beneficiaries together with beneficiaries from the other member states, they can participate, in particular, the Eurasian Europe missions, the European partnerships calls that they are going to be established, but also the possibilities on innovation under the European Innovation Council, the pilot that was already done under Horizon 2020, where we had quite good participation from Polish beneficiaries, and I expect that this is going to be increased. The new Horizon Europe program provide us the possibilities for more synergies with cohesion policy program. And this is a really important instrument uh, that could be used by uh, the Polish admi public administration, the, the Poland, and for the benefit of their beneficiaries. So we facilitated a lot the use and the implementation of the seal of excellence. We have the possibilities to transfer cohesion fund budget to be implemented centrally in the context of Horizon Europe in areas and priorities that are considered that they are of the highest interest for Poland. We have the possibility uh, to use uh, the cohesion funds as contributions to the European partnerships. There is also the possibility uh, to continue with uh, the synergies between Horizon Europe and the use of the Horizon Europe results and solutions to be implemented at local and national level on the basis of uh, the structural funds possibilities provided and on the basis of the interests of the local and regional administration. So we strongly believe that this new framework program, the new opportunities on synergies and the new uh, knowledge that we are going to provide uh, through the NCPs through the new instruments under Horizon Europe for widening countries will support and help the Horizon Europe beneficiaries and in particular the Polish beneficiaries to have more chances for success under Horizon Europe. And we are very much welcome their participation and we are happy to support and provide any advice needed in this context. Thank you very much, Mrs. Pandagopoulou, for all this. Uh, explanations and highlights. Director Gaczyński, and where do you see the most promising novelties? Uh, good morning. Uh, let me build on what Anna just have uh, said. Uh, we appreciate very much from the side of the Polish government the possibilities that were created as regards the synergies between Horizon Europe and uh, the cohesion policy package, uh, we will definitely uh, build uh, on it. But uh, I, would I would like to uh, stress more uh, two aspects Anna mentioned in her intervention. First is the uh, co-creation pro uh, process that is happening right now under the Horizon uh, Europe. This co-creation process means that Polish side, being the Polish entrepreneurs, Polish scientists, Polish administration, has much more, uh, many more possibilities to discuss and influence the work packages that will be financed under the Horizon Europe, that offers new possibilities uh, for us to build the work packages in a way that will be done they will be more uh, supportive towards Polish uh, beneficiaries. The second issue that is of uh, crucial importance for uh, me is the change of the um, philosophy that lies at the uh, bottom of the horizon Europe. I mean, from the 
dominant excellent science approach that we experience under the seven framework program and in horizon 2020 we move towards more impact impact uh, giving research in a sense that uh, excellent science is important but at the same level we evaluate uh, the impact science is making in our lives that of, uh, also in my opinion opens quite a new possibilities for participation for uh, from polish uh, entrepreneurs and polish research uh, research organization i would like to uh, mention uh, as regards increased particip Polish participation in Horizon uh, Europe, I would like to mention one important issue that happened here on the ground in Poland. I mean the change in the evaluation pattern of research organization in Poland. If you look into the regulation that governs the evaluation patterns, you will see that participation in Horizon Europe uh, projects dramatically increase your uh, valuation evaluation uh, scores if for instance uh, for participation in erc grants you receive 400 more points in the evaluation so it, it is a game changer so without being uh, present in horizon europe you are not able to be evaluated uh, positively. Therefore, I think such a change will increase our participation in the uh, in the Horizon Europe. But uh, I would like to draw your attention to one thing that doesn't change from Horizon 2020 to Horizon Europe. This changes the simplification and relative simplicity for the beneficiary. It's not like we change the whole internal rules of the horizon uh, europe the rules are more or less the same so if you participated in horizon 2020 you have the competences and knowledge to successfully participate in horizon europe so judging from the side of the um, widening country it's a good uh, message for our research organization you don't need to teach uh, to learn from the beginning how to participate in the framework program uh, you can maybe slightly adjust your uh, um, internal procedures in order to be a, an important part of the of the program. So, from from our perspective, from our perspective, those are the strengths that will definitely influence the Polish participation in the Horizon uh, Horizon Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think that the very important issues have been already tackled by our two first speakers. And my next question goes to Professor Andrzej Jańszczyk. As the Vice President of the European Research Council, where do you foresee our best chances in the new program? ERC grants, being very prestigious, are among the most desired ones. So far, there haven't been many Polish ERC grants. But in the last calls, we could observe an increased interest and higher success rate. Professor Jajszczyk, do you think that Polish participation in ERC grants will follow this optimistic trend in Horizon Europe? Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, the ERC grants are very prestigious, indeed, as you mentioned. Uh, but our performance as researchers working in Poland is definitely below our expectations. Uh, the reasons for that poor performance is quite complex, but I have to stress that they, uh, those reasons uh, are here in our country, not within the ERC or its evaluation process. We simply have to catch up uh, with best performing countries by improving the quality and competitiveness of our research. This is possible. We have some examples of success in applying for ERC grants. Just to mention a very strong group of computer scientists from the University of Warsaw or Polish astronomers. 
I'm going back to your question. I'm cautiously optimistic uh, as the horizon of Europe is concerned, uh, partly because I see a considerable efforts of the National Contact Point and other organizations, such as Polish Academy of Sciences, in supporting researchers from Poland applying for ERC grants. But we have to remember that ERC is and will become a very competitive agency. And when we look at the current trend in uh, the growth of the numbers of applications for various ERC calls, uh, the success rate is, is, is pretty low. So as SERC from the ERC side, we, we try to get more funds from, from Europe, from European Union to, to finance those really good uh, proposals that come from various countries, including Poland. Uh, of course, I, I do understand that ERC is not the only agency and, and other needs in terms of funding of research in Europe are also very important. But, but you know, ERC is and will stay a, a funding agency that funds really top uh, frontier research. Uh, and it's very important that we in Poland uh, could play a more important role there. Thank you very much. The results in Horizon 2020 prove that, like probably every country, Poland has its strong areas. Statistics show more intensive participation and also more coordinations in certain fields. These are, for example, information and communication technologies, Mary Skłodowska Curie actions, energy transport research infrastructures. What are the strongest points for, research, for Polish research units and Polish enterprises when it comes to Horizon Europe's offer? Are they only thematic? Or do you see some structural changes that would influence Polish participation in the new program? And this time I'm going to ask again Mr. Mateusz Gaczyński to comment on that. Thank you very much for the question. Um, uh, th talking about strength may, uh, uh, may um, create an impression that we are uh, very good at some points, which is not the case because we are competing with uh, other very good or excellent scientists or, uh, or entrepreneurs. So, uh, Having, have, having strong points, uh, that it, it doesn't guarantee uh, for, the, uh, for the success, in, in uh, my opinion. One of the points that Polish researchers uh, or Polish teams always had in a European research program was uh, very brutal um, uh, economic uh, calculation in the sense that we offered excellent quality for moderate price. Uh, but I think that due to our initiative that is called PACT, so the change in the remuneration patterns of Polish researchers, that will soon uh, change. So uh, such, uh, uh, such strength will, uh, we need to cross out from, from, the, uh, from our lead. Of course, Polish science had a very good uh, research infrastructure base. We clearly see that thanks to the uh, investments that we made over the last uh, few years in research infrastructures, more and more projects are being located in uh, Poland, not only uh, due, to, due to Polish uh, teams, but also uh, due to close cooperation uh, European research organization had, had, has with, uh, have with the uh, Polish uh, research uh, in, uh, in infrastructures. We, we can see, it, see that and we support this, um, uh, this notion. As for the structural change, I already talked about this change in the evaluation, which is crucial, and we see it definitely from the data. If we, co if we compare the amount of Polish applications before the change in the evaluation pattern and after, afterwards, we clearly see that 
uh, people on the ground, so in the research organization, saw this opportunity as uh, the, opportunity for, the opportunity for them to be better evaluated uh, and to receive more money from the state uh, budget. Uh, another point in, as regards the structural changes, we have currently better support of internationalization uh, in our uh, portfolio. We have the National Agency for uh, Academic Exchange, which supports exchange of brains between Poland and other countries. And we see that it's, it's not one way, uh, uh, one way path. So uh, it's not like we uh, export our best brains, but we see that Poland having some strengths in, in different areas attracts uh, good or excellent researchers from other uh, countries, uh, like um, uh, from, from other countries. What I see as a real game changer as regards our participation uh, that will influence uh, our presence in the Horizon uh, Europe is the structural change we have with, with the uh, National Contact Point. Moving National Contact Point from the Institute of Polish Academy of Science, where they worked very well, to the most important funding agency in Poland, National Center for R&D, I think it will change dramatically the visibility of Horizon uh, Europe and also the quality of support that will be given to the Polish applicants and beneficiaries on all stages. Uh, it will allow also for preparation and launching the the, 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 the call for proposals that will allow for better preparation of proposals for the Horizon uh, Europe. I would like also to mention the uh, new uh, uh, business science uh, uh, place in Brussels. There is a, a contact, point, contact point in uh, Brussels uh, operated by the National Center for R&D that supports us, our uh, researchers and our entrepreneurs in the discussion on various European levels, how to structure their presence in uh, Horizon Europe. So we know we, we have our strengths. We uh, know that we have weaknesses. We need, we need to work on the weaknesses, on the weaknesses, but we also have some very strong uh, maybe not corners uh, stones, but a very strong framework on which we can build our uh, successful presence in the Horizon Europe. Thank you. Thank you for all these pertinent comments. And I'd like to ask the same question to President Darzyński. The strongest points for Polish research units and Polish enterprises when it comes to Horizon Europe's offer, they are rather thematic, or do you see some other factors that would influence Polish participation in the new program. Hello, thank you very much for being here. It is a great pleasure to, for me, uh, and this is a big day for not only scientists, but uh, also companies in, in Poland. And uh, Łukasiewicz, this is uh, 32 institutes. Uh, they built a research network. We have uh, 7,500 employees. And the goal to build Łukasiewicz was to increase the Polish activities in, in Horizon, uh, Horizon 2020 and to prepare to be prepared uh, well to the uh, next uh, program to the Horizon Europe. So we were engaged in 82 projects funded from Horizon 2020. And uh, this means that third position of among Polish research organizations after the Polish Academy of Science and the University of Warsaw, with total budget about three, uh, 35 million euro, we have the second position in Poland after the Polish uh, Academy of uh, Science. And uh, when we can indicate some topics and issues which could uh, be, uh, which we have in uh, in, in programs uh, in projects in Horizon 2020, and, and I think it will be. In Horizon Europe, the similar situation. Uh, so they, we have the, the, the topics like uh, aviation and uh, space industry. This is 19 projects. Uh, digitalization and robotics, including digital innovation hubs. This is uh, 16 projects. 
raw materials, energy and environment, uh, the 15 projects, new materials and graph and 10 projects, and transport and mobility, eight projects. Uh, in above uh, areas, we are ready to co cooperate with Polish and foreign partners, scientists and companies. However, we were uh, also engaged and we are looking for the partners in areas such as uh, agri-food, uh, forestry, health and medicine. And I think that in the future, in Horizon Europe, the, the health and medicine uh, will be very important for not only Łukasiewicz, uh, uh, but for the, uh, for the uh, companies and the scientists from uh, Poland. Uh, our institutes have also experience in coordinating projects funded from Horizon 22. Uh, a leader in Łukasiewicz, this is the Łukasiewicz Institute of Aviation, Łukasiewicz ILOT, they uh, coordinated five projects. And we have one project from Teaming of Excellence scheme, and this is Ensemble uh, 3, uh, uh, which is coordinated by Łukasiewicz uh, uh, IMIF. Uh, I, as I said, we are very, very young organization because we, we, we are two years old. Uh, we are the startups with uh, 7,000 employees still, uh, but uh, we have the institutes, they have a long tradition and in the last two years, we, uh, we have observed uh, that the interest in European cause among our institutes is growing. And this is good news. And institutes are open to, working, uh, to work together and join projects. For example, in European Green Deal call closed in January 2021, we have managed to submit 10 applications. Um, and when uh, it's going uh, about the structural uh, changes, uh, one change which we think is very interesting concerns the rising uh, engagement of our institutes in projects dedicated not only to technology development, but also projects related to knowledge transfer via trainings, mentorings and coaching. One of our institutes is a member of Enterprise European Network. This is Łukasiewicz Imbix, and several institutes were engaged in foresight projects and awareness uh, uh, building projects. Uh, these projects allow us to better understanding uh, the needs of our partners, of our companies, of, uh, of our uh, inst institutes and develop our network and contacts, which we think will be very useful in calls from Horizon, uh, Horizon Europe. And the last thing, uh, and I think our success uh, uh, in Horizon 2020, and it will be in Horizon Europe for us very important too, this is a very active cooperation with communi communities of uh, European Institute of In Innovation and Technology, EIT. Uh, in 2020, we managed to join the Climate Kids uh, EIT Health and EIT Urban Mobility. We are also collaborating very close, uh, closely with uh, EIT Raw Materials and EIT Manufacturing. Uh, Łukasiewicz Piap is a hosting role uh, uh, of the EIT Manufacturing in Poland. And we have very, very good contacts with uh, EIT Food, food and uh, in Energy. So this, this cooperation, not only in the pillar Two, but in the pillar three is for us very important. They were, we are looking with the, we, we, we have the, the big hope with the, with the European Innovation Council is something new. And we, we are thinking that it's the instrument that will be for us very, very, uh, very good. So uh, this is uh, what we did and uh, I think it helped us to be much better prepared to the European, uh, to, to Horizon Europe as to uh, Horizon 2020. Thank you very much. I must admit, it sounds very optimistic. Ladies and gentlemen, nobody is perfect. Having talked about strengths, we have to talk about weaknesses. What, in your opinion, are the main barriers that face Polish enterprises while they are preparing their proposal or maybe even 
thinking about preparing a proposal. And this time I will address my question to Mrs. Kinga Stanisławska. Good afternoon, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, first of all, just to give some background to um, the EIC and the EIC fund, which I think is key here. Um, the 10, over 10 billion euro budget, uh, which is dedicated to helping the best founders in Europe over the next couple of years is split into two parts. There is of course the grant element, which is the 2.5 million euro per company that continues um, from the SME accelerator, the second, uh, the second instrument. But there is the new element, which is around the 4 billion euro fund uh, of investments into equity of companies between 500,000 euro per company and 15 million euros. So very substantial amounts. So it's very, very important for Polish companies to apply to these programs, to be on the radar screen here, and to really use this platform of equity investments to excel deep tech innovation. Now, in the past, such instruments did not exist. Um, there is only the pilot, which was launched about a year ago, which is now progressing through um, the approval processes. So there will be around 160 investment into equity, into leading European companies that will happen most likely by the end of June. And that is the pilot. And now the launch has been started for the new intake. And uh, the preparation for this is key um, to be able to win. The success rate, as we know, is uh, it's difficult. It's not an easy contest to be approved the grant and the equity element, but we must prepare for the best. So um, the, the key area here is to be um, entrepreneurial. This is an instrument, now I'm talking about the equity part, which is dedicated towards those who come from deep tech, those who have um, strong intellectual property, but who want to be entrepreneurs, who are founders of companies, who are very determined to make those companies large, important, and to meet important challenges of what we are facing. And whether that will be uh, challenges in green tech or challenges in medical aspects or education or nanotechnologies or quantum, uh, the common denominator will always be that they are big, important, future-related challenges, and the applicants are very clearly on path and are entrepreneurs. So in order to, um, to meet the requirements of the program, the first thing is the mindset. And I don't think that Poland differs from any other country here. There is nothing that is weak or worse about us, um, actually. Poland is an underfunded, all in all, uh, place for venture capital investments. That is true. It is still only around a quarter of the European average, and Europe is only about a quarter of the US. But that doesn't mean that Polish entrepreneurs cannot make it in a, on a global scale. They clearly can. They have the right capabilities, and they have the skills and know-how but they need to get out of their comfort zones. They need to think big. They need to find partners, get feedback early and constantly on their projects and think commercialization. I think the requirements to meet the equity investment of EIC fund are pretty clear. They're presented at many conferences. They're widely spoken about. You need to be important for the future, you need to be deep tech, you need to, um, you need to solve an important um, environmental, social or other type of impact issue um, and be very determined to find equity partners because the EIC fund works on matching principles. That means that the EIC fund is a co-investor to market players. That means that 
right the very minute where you are making the first application, you already need to be discussing your revenue with partners, with clients. You need to be, be discussing co-investments with potential investors. And by that, I mean they could be angel investors, they could be venture capital funds, they could be strategic investors, they could be CVCs. Um, there could be any type of any investor from anywhere globally. But these are the things that need to be in place because the EIC fund is there to fund the best founders, the best European entrepreneurs. So it's important to think like an entrepreneur, act like an entrepreneur, be prepared, be informed, be close to the market, build a network, talk to others and show this determination in building a very large and important company for the future of Europe. And I think that Poland is very good with this. It has shown in the past that it can build digital companies. There is no reason now that it cannot build big deep tech companies. So I'm very much looking forward to seeing Polish companies be successful in applications for the EIC and the EIC fund. Thank you very much. I'm very happy you have mentioned all these crucial aspects. President Darczynski, and what about research organizations? What is the most challenging aspect from their point of view? Uh, I talked about the projects that we have, uh, and we are very active, the, but I think that uh, not only Łukasiewicz, but uh, all uh, uh, research institutes uh, in, in Poland uh, are still not so active in, uh, uh, in uh, European funds as we uh, expected. So the, the, this, this ambitions, we have to, inc to, to, to realize this, this ambition. So, we want to increase the number of our projects uh, and we want uh, not only to increase the number of projects but but we want especially be uh, uh, projects coordinated so we we need not only be be a part of european projects but we we, we want to be a coordinator of this uh, project and we know that it uh, will be not uh, easy and we have one excellent example in Łukasiewicz, which is uh, uh, Łukasiewicz uh, Institute of Aviation. And uh, this case of uh, Łukasiewicz Ilots uh, show us that the building experience in leading European projects and recognitions among European partners is a long-term process and uh, requires strong uh, engagement from management team and uh, as well a very active networking uh, uh, in at the european level for example Łukasiewicz Elot is a member of era uh, from many many years and uh, he's he has now in this organization leading position and therefore we have they have a much better position when they build the uh, consortia to to european projects so this is the we have to work at the European level. This is the weakness that we still have uh, now, not only in Łukasiewicz, but in, in Poland. Uh, the, the second important issue, uh, which I think it could be a problem, is a growing role of uh, so growing role of uh, so-called own contribution in European research projects, including also a research organization. It could be a, pro a barrier, a problem for organization to take part in projects with obligatory own contribution, especially financial one. It's, it's clear that we, we don't have so many, so many fi financial sources as uh, our colleagues in, in, in West uh, uh, Europe. So for many organizations with whom we are working in international projects, the most problematic issue is also low level of uh, indirect uh, uh, indirect costs which means that they uh, should ensure funding from other sources uh, to cover for example the costs of maintaining or, or upgrading uh, of modern research uh, infrastructure 
Uh, and uh, from our point of view, in our organization, we have also observed relatively low engagement uh, of our institutes on mobility schemes uh, offered by, by Horizon, Horizon 2020. Uh, our institutes were engaged uh, in only three projects funded from Maria Kiliskodowska Actions, and when we know that we have uh, 7,400 employees, I think that uh, it's, uh, uh, we have to change this. Uh, uh, but uh, of course, we are working on that. Uh, however, the pandemic situation uh, complicates uh, significantly our activities in this area, but uh, we, we have still a big uh, ambitions in, in this field uh, uh, too. This is the weakness that I, that I see, weaknesses. Thank you very much. And my next uh, question follows immediately the previous one. What could be done and quickly enough to have an impact uh, on the situation under Horizon Europe with a view to removing or at least limiting uh, existing barriers? Mrs. Stanisławska, can you think of any examples of things that can be done in the nearest future? Well, I think that removing barriers is about removing barriers for doing business. And the barriers for doing business or the kind of challenges and things that slow you down have to do largely with the legislative, with the tax, with the regulatory environment. And this is what can be done. And this is clearly a government initiative to make it easy, friendly and cheap to build investments here to invest in Poland. From the other point of view, the best thing that can be done is to invite others from all over the world to co-invest with the locals. So to encourage the deployment of capital very quickly, to cut down processes, to just make things fast and streamlined. We know that in the past it was not so. And we know that processes for getting grants, for getting capital were very, very long and took 12 months, 24 months. There is no reason for this institutions should streamline and move very very fast the faster they deploy the capital the faster the founders can use it and the faster the companies can grow so um, there are examples in europe that have done this extremely well estonia is the european leader of digitalization where doing business is very easy where it's very much investor friendly and everything that needs to be done is cheap and digitalized. These are the kind of environmental factors that can be solved and then let the market do the rest. Thank you very much. President Dardinsky, and what do you think about this? Is there anything that can be changed quickly? So the quickly, it's not so easy, but uh, there is al always something that we can uh, we can do to uh, to lose the problems. Uh, and uh, uh, as I said, we are in very because we have a problem at the, at the European level in cooperation. So uh, we are, we are very active uh, in cooperation with Brussels Business and Science Poland uh, office. Uh, it's a, as um, Director Gaczyński said, this is really very, very important initiatives that the Polish government has. Uh, and uh, we uh, are cooperating very closely, not only with BSP in Brussels, but also with the national contacts point in, uh, in Poland. We have uh, organized uh, with BSP and NCP many webinars for Lukasiewicz employees. So we prepare people how to, how to build the projects, how to build the consortia. Uh, we are also fully aware to only large organization can afford to be active present in Brussels. And uh, we think that the idea of Lukasiewicz as a networking organization can, can help us to build such visibility and presence at the European uh, level. We have a really very, very good uh, cooperation with uh, Polish companies uh, and not only Polish, but uh, also with the international companies. Uh, in the last year, we started the cooperation with uh, more than 200 companies 
and they are very interesting in 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 uh, uh, in uh, horizon europe that therefore i am very optimistic that we will we can really build the effectiveness in this uh, in this uh, field uh, so cooperation with bsp in poland uh, in brussels cooperation with ncp uh, in poland and we are also very active in the in brussels Łukasiewicz is a member of EARTOS since one year, and since uh, 2022, I have the privilege to be a member of uh, governing board of EARTO. We are very active if, in working groups, and we, uh, we, our presence in, presence in EARTO is, uh, is inspired, by, uh, inspired by the ex experience uh, of Łukasiewicz, I, I talked about uh, this, that if you want to be a partner in Europa, you have to be a member of, of strong organization in uh, uh, in, uh, in Brussels, and ARTO is one of, the, of them, and we are very proud to be the part of this uh, of organization. Uh, and the, the last point, uh, but also very important, concerns synergies and uh, complementaries between Horizon and national programs, uh, especially clear and simple especially clear and simple rules concerning national contribution to the to the European projects. Uh, we should strongly support the instruments in new operational program for modern economy concerning national contribution in European projects. And we hope that it will have an appropriate financial allocation in the program. So we would like to encourage national the national um, um, agencies uh, like uh, NCN or uh, NCBR to establish new instruments that dedicated to support projects uh, from one to four or five uh, TRL levels, uh, which then could be founded higher TRL uh, levels uh, from Horizon uh, Europe. It's uh, really much easier to join or build international consortia when we can uh, present ideas which have been verified at least a very early stage of uh, development. So we need uh, still a help and support from NCN and NCBR, but uh, I'm very optimistic in this uh, field. Uh, because the cooperation between the police agencies and institutes and universities uh, uh, since uh, last uh, uh, two or three years uh, is really very, very, very good. We try to be prepared to the to Horizon uh, Europe. Uh, we will see how it works now. Thank you very much. Um, I agree, of course, with a lot of points that you have raised. And in particular, of course, I encourage you strongly from this place to contact a uh, national contact point and the NCBR office in Brussels, because we are really here uh, for the next seven years. We are here to help you. Um, so thank you very much for all these uh, interesting opinions. Um, and here's my last question in this debate. Statistics can always be better. But competition is one of the key words while talking about EU framework programs. To be a player in the European First League, a research team needs to be very determined. Nothing is guaranteed, even the best teams sometimes fail. Spreading knowledge about the program is actually one of the duties of the national contact points. That is why I'm very curious to hear your answers. How can we effectively motivate Polish participants? While advertising Horizon Europe, what would you list as your top three things to highlight? Mrs. Panagopoulou, can you start the round this time? Yes, thank you very much for this question. And I would like to reinstate what you said, first of all. You are our ambassadors at the member states. The national contact points, they have to provide as much as possible information about the opportunities, about the way to participate to the program, and to make clear that the European Commission and the program this time, it's even more simplified 
and pro 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 promotes the possibility of newcomers to participate to the program and the opportunities that they are provided, in particular under widening, has to be highlighted. But indeed, uh, it takes time and efforts to have a success in the program. So what you could do to mobilize and motivate uh, Polish beneficiaries, applicants to participate? First of all, use the success stories that you have. Capitalize on the experience of those participants of the program to share it with the others and to explain why it's worthwhile, what is the benefit of participating to uh, the program, even if it takes a lot of effort and time to succeed on that. Comparing and benchmarking the research work with the expectations of the EU level funders. So help them to understand what they have to put in their proposals in order to be successful and, ex and accepted at the EU level. I try to tell them to try to identify other actors in science, business and society that share the same interest and orient align the research work in a multidisciplinary and intersectorial context. This is very important for establishing the networks and be successful in the next call. And last but not least, Competing with the best in Europe and elsewhere to get closer, faster to the frontiers of science or to be part of the teams that will lead the next breakthrough discoveries in science of technologies is extremely important. The more you try, the more and the harder you try, the more and the sooner you will be recognized as a leading member of the community, someone to turn to when seeking to set up new teams or to reinforce existing ones. So you have to try in order to be recognized. And then, of course, when you are part of a leading network, there is no guarantee that you stay in. It is, you know, like in the restaurants with stars, but you are already connected to a wealth of world-class resources, human financial infrastructures that will bring your research work to another level. These are my positive messages that I would like to pass. Thank you very much indeed. Professor Jajszczyk, and what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there is no just simple or single tool. But first of all, we have to educate young researchers about a successful research career. Uh, a month ago, uh, I participated at a virtual conference organized by the National Con uh, Contact Point on such issues, and I was surprised by comments of some young participants uh, who questioned such obvious prerequisites of success in research as the need for hard work, international mobility, or even publishing in English in renowned international journals. So we really have to change that here. Of course, it's, it's related only to, to some, say, fraction of, say, Polish uh, research environment, but anyway. Uh, and I also believe, and I concur with uh, Anna uh, Panagopolo, uh, that good practices, the presentation of good practices and success stories from other European countries uh, could also contribute to a better performance of our researchers. Uh, in the last consolidated grant call, the concluded consolidated grant call, uh, researchers from Poland received free grants. Uh, what by some was treated as a spectacular success. But within the same call, uh, researchers from Spain won 22 grants. They are not smarter than we are, aren't they? Yeah? We shouldn't be afraid of competing. Uh, it's also important to convey an important message to leaders of Polish universities and other research institutions. If you don't employ excellent researchers, uh, among them ERC grantees, your institution is outside not only European, but also the National Premier League. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for sharing with us these pertinent remarks and ideas. It looks like our time is already up. Dear panelists, thank you very much indeed for your participation in the launch debate of this conference.
conference. New instruments, new approach, new priorities, so many opportunities for this new long, seven years long perspective. The overall impression from this debate seems to be very encouraging and optimistic. I think we were able to give to the audience a hint of what we can expect and hope for from this new programme. We'll do our best to answer the questions from the chat uh, in the coming days. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Ladies and gentlemen, our brains, in order to function properly, need proper fuel. So right now, we would like to invite you for a lunch break. But before we begin the break, I would like to give you a very important information, because after the lunch break, we'll have two parallel thematic sessions followed by discussions. So it is up to you to choose uh, the channel that you seem or the topic that you find appropriate, useful or interesting and to follow this discussion. Remember, you have the choice between channel number one and channel number two. And this is going to happen after the lunch break. So we'll come back at half past one.
Ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, welcome after the lunch break. Uh, this is Horizon Europe launching conference and we do encourage you to take part in our conference, not just by watching, but of course take part also actively. You may ask questions, we'll try to provide you with answers. They'll be also published on the website of the conference later. So feel free to ask questions because we will be able to answer them. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to channel number one. Uh, change is the basis of development and development is the basis of evolution. And the title of this debate is Be the Change. Horizon Europe clusters and missions, Europe's response to global challenges. Right now, let me introduce the moderator, Tomasz Mruz. NCP Food, Bioeconomy, Natural Resources, Agriculture and Environment, National Center for Research and Development. Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to welcome you to the uh, Be the Change uh, mission and uh, cluster session. Uh, my name is uh, Tomasz Mruz, and as a national contact point, as well as a European citizen, I'm truly excited. It's a great honor and a great pleasure uh, to uh, be with you here today and to moderate this uh, discussion panel. We will talk, we will listen, we will create together the future of a sustainable and a green Europe. I'm delighted to announce the stellar, stellar lineup of uh, session panelists. We have with us two representatives of the European Commission from DG for Research and Innovation, uh, Dr. Bernd Bierwert, Head of Ecological and Social Transition Unit, and Dr. Neville Reeve, Head of uh, Mission Sector. Also Polish, uh, also Polish innovation leaders, representatives of science, non-governmental organizations and industry. Professor Dr. Habilitowany Jarosław Bosy, uh, Rector of the Wrocław University of Environmental and Life Sciences. Dr. Inżynier Agnieszka Szynek, President of the Board Institute of Innovation and Respons Responsible Development in Novo. And Mr. Michele Andolfo, R&D Director in KFLEX Polska. Welcome. Without further ado, let's explore the opportunities for innovation in uh, Pillar 2 of the Horizon Europe. The COVID-19 crisis is undoubtedly something unprecedented, and the world has been uh, struggling to contain the pandemic. However, while the COVID-19 pandemic uh, has been disrupting our society uh, only the past year, Europe has been facing uh, global long-term changes that are reducing, significantly reducing, our choices for the future, such as climate change, uh, loss of biodiversity, aging population, and uh, increasing inequalities. More than ever, an anticipatory, rapid and effective R&I response is crucial no country in the world uh, can meet basic needs for its citizens without transgressing planetary boundaries to some extent. Uh, research and innovation enable and accelerate the transition towards a more sustainable and fair society. A significant step in this direction is uh, the European Green Deal strategy driven by the ninth framework program Horizon Europe and its uh, new approaches, new instruments uh, for international cooperation and uh, project financing, cluster and missions. Europe's response to global challenges and European industrial competitiveness includes six thematic clusters to boost uh, key technologies and uh, solutions. Dr. Bierwert, could you please tell us uh, what is the Horizon Euro Europe clusters innovation and intervention logic 
uh, what do they offer and whom will they engage? Um, bardzo dobrze dziękujemy, Tomasz, za um, pozywanie. Uh, that's uh, as far as I can get uh, with my with my Polish. And uh, thanks a lot for uh, in, in inviting me to 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 this um, event. I'm very impressed by your studio. Uh, I'd love to sit there, and instead I'm in my very colorful room. Apologies for the many colors. I I couldn't make it uh, less less colorful. Um, Thomas, for on on your question, I, I wanted um, first of all, if you allow, um, underline um, your your description and assessment of of, of Horizon Europe, as it explains already very well um, how uh, this new um, instrument can can respond to the challenges you have been already uh, alluding to, and it's indeed as we we see it uh, also here in. In, in Brussels as a key instrument to steer and um, accelerate uh, Europe's uh, recovery. We are uh, still in the uh, pandemic context, uh, as, you, as you rightly said, and uh, launching now quite an ambitious uh, recovery um, program where the digital but also the green transition uh, is very much at the, at the forefront. And where with um, our new um, instrument uh, we want to steer this this green uh, transition um, we want to strengthen our uh, knowledge base which is very much needed uh, in these areas uh, we want to um, accelerate breakthrough innovation and support uh, development and demonstration of of innovation um, actions um, and i think I know that this, this morning you've been discussing more generally already the, the novelties uh, of Horizon Europe in, in, in general, that uh, the challenges of, of, of today call much, much more for a systemic approach, for an approach uh, which is more cross-sectoral, uh, which uh, breaks uh, uh, silos. Uh, because if you look at the, the climate uh, crisis we are, we are challenging and which is an existential uh, threat for all of us, not only in Europe, uh, be it Central Europe, uh, West, uh, East, North, uh, South, but of course it's an existential uh, threat for um, unfortunately uh, the whole uh, uh, planet. Uh, these uh, challenges and these uh, threats uh, call for a new approach, for a systemic um, approach. Um, we cannot look anymore isolated uh, at sectors and therefore the New Horizon Europe program um, is very um, um, emblematic to move from a sector to a systems uh, uh, approach. And if you look at the, the clusters which are um, mostly focusing on addressing our sustainability agenda, um, and, and the climate uh, issue, uh, so cluster five, which is or will be dealing with, with climate science, uh, with energy uh, issues, transport issues, and cluster six, food, uh, bioeconomy, agriculture, natural resources. Um, these are um, uh, uh, clusters which uh, very well uh, showcase uh, this um, systemic, new systemic um, approach. Um, Thomas, you asked me um, more specifically about the, the, the intervention uh, uh, logic. And of course, um, as, you, as you said, from, from the legal um, basis, uh, the, the legal basis uh, carves already out the pillars. We are here focusing in this session on the uh, second uh, pillar and, and the clusters. And the, the legal basis for Horizon Europe has already spelled out uh, the areas, the intervention areas where it wants to see a research innovation be particularly active. Um, for the first time, and uh, now you already um, touched upon it uh, with Horizon Europe, um, we have introduced a, a new uh, guidance uh, a document, which is um, extremely important um, as, a, as an orientation, the strategic plan. Um, and which uh, addresses uh, our um, EU priorities and uh, the Green Deal. We are going to come to, to this uh, issue a little bit more specifically also within the Polish uh, context is of course one of the key um, priorities and will stay so uh, despite and uh, 
because of, of the, 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 um, the, the, the pandemic. But of course, there are economic uh, priorities, there are social um, priorities. And of course, we have to see it also in the, in the global uh, context um, as sustainability issues, climate issues don't stop um, at the order. The strategic plan um, sets out uh, the so-called uh, key strategic orientations. And, and let me just um, recall very quickly, as they are important for, for, the, for the topics we are, we are discussing, because the key strategic uh, orientations um, uh, underline that uh, we want to, to go for, number one, open um, strategic autonomy, and this is becoming even more important uh, in, the, in the context of vaccinations, of industrial strategies, electrification, for example. It's about uh, also restoring Europe's um, ecosystem and uh, biodiversity. And you know also the link between a declining uh, biodiversity and uh, increasing um, threats, uh, which uh, can lead to pandemias like the one we are currently facing. The third um, uh, um, strategic orientation is about uh, creating a more uh, resilient and inclusive uh, democratic European society. And inclusiveness is uh, particularly important because if you are discussing climate issues, it's also and very much about the social um, dimension. And I know this is a topic which is particularly important in, in Poland with uh, um, a number of uh, so-called carbon intensive region, regions where we have jointly to, to make sure that no one is uh, left behind on this endeavor and the fourth force uh, or strategic orientation is um, to make Europe not only digitally uh, enabled but a, a circular climate neutral uh, sustainable economy and um, if you look then more in detail uh, on, on the clusters these uh, key strategic orientations um, trickle down into into the in, into the, the the following structure um, so the strategic plan defines then what should be the expected uh, impacts of uh, the, the interventions we are, we, are, we are going. And then when we are coming to the third level, so after the legal base, the strategic plan to the, to the work program. And uh, with your launch event, uh, as you know, you are, you are ahead of, of, of the time. We are um, currently busily, including today, um, trying to, to finalize the work program so that it can be uh, adopted in time in, in the coming uh, months. Um, the work program then defines the different uh, destinations. Um, Thomas, I will say a few were more words about the destinations in the ensuing um, uh, debate for Cluster 5. And these destinations, uh, such as climate uh, science or energy demand, energy supply, um, then within these destinations, uh, of course, we set up uh, the calls and the topics and define what are the expected outcomes, uh, what do we expect uh, research and innovation can contribute um, uh, to, to these uh, very um, important uh, challenges. Um, let, let me close by uh, saying, hoping that I haven't uh, um, too much exhausted my, my, my time, um, Span that when we are talking more in detail about um, the work program and the clusters, um, it is important to, to keep in mind that uh, the, the cluster is not only about the work program. Uh, we have also the so-called and very important uh, institutionalized uh, partnerships, um, which join forces between industry and the public uh, sector and are extremely powerful to join uh, climate uh, sustainability objectives with economic and industrial um, objectives and which play also in terms of budget an important role. If you take cluster five, we expect that around half of the budget uh, will be dedicated to, to the partnerships uh, such as clean aviation. And then last but not uh, least, uh, the cluster um, uh, is composed also of the missions. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to see uh, Neville uh, with me sitting in, in this panel and who will say you, of course, much more uh, on the missions. Back to you. Thank you so much. It's a great pity that we do not have more time, but thank you very much uh, for uh, this uh, nice uh, overview.
Uh, so only by increasing investments in uh, research and innovation, ICT, skills and economic competencies uh, can Europe fulfill its ambition uh, to lead the green transformation. Ambitious goals call for ambitious approaches. We already know what a new uh, cross-sectoral clusters approach is. The key is also systemic. But what about missions? Inspired by Apollo 11 mission uh, to put a man on the moon, the European research and innovation missions aim to deliver solutions to some of the greatest challenges uh, facing our world, not only Europe, but whole world, such as cancer, climate change, healthy oceans, climate neutral cities, healthy soil and food. However, if we have clusters, why do we need emissions? Dr. Reeve, please help us understand the difference. What is the missions innovation and intervention logic? Uh, what this key novelty offers and who can join it? Thank you very much. Um, I'm really delighted to be here and I must compliment you also, um, as did my colleague Bernd, on the beautiful setup, which um, certainly is very professional. Um, this is a very, very good question. What is the difference between the clusters and the missions approach? Of course, there is a close connection that has to be emphasized right from the start. We program our missions um, primarily from the clusters. The approach of the missions is different in a fundamental sense, I guess, that we're looking at something which is um, cross cluster first of all and secondly we're looking at the duration of the mission as being substantially longer than you might typically find in the clusters so we take um, um, contributions from um, a number of clusters for each mission um, we, we have a center of gravity for each mission i mean you've mentioned already clusters five and cluster six these cover quite a number of our missions but the point is is that the missions really rely on contributions coming right the way across the profile of all of those clusters but not only that also from the other eu programs which will provide potentially a significant advance to the sort of work we're doing in the missions. Now, it's not just about research and innovation. I think that's really at the very heart of what, we, what we've been saying from the beginning with this missions-based approach. It's simply not just a question of a new way of packaging up the research and innovation. As an example of that, we've been able to put in place a new type of governance in the way which we internally organize for our missions approach. And we have the um, mission manager being created in a DG um, which is not research and innovation. And that's a really big step forward for us. We're saying very publicly that the face of that mission comes from a sectoral area. Um, the RNI, of course, provides a huge contribution, a huge uh, direction to that mission, but it really has to have the contribution, the lead coming from elsewhere. Um, I think that probably answers your question about the difference between the the sectors and the or the clusters and the missions, but also emphasizes that important characteristic of the missions approach. Over to you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Reeve. Uh, thus, it can be said that uh, missions are key novelty for more impact and visibility. They are to better uh, relate European research and innovation to society and citizens' needs. So the next question just uh, backs itself, I think. Uh, how can society, science and industry benefit from the offer of clusters and uh, missions? How will the proposed new approaches affect the efficiency of using the opportunities uh, created by this new instrument. And this time I'm looking on our Polish innovation leaders. Uh, please, uh, maybe we could start from society. Uh, Dr. Schneck, could you start, please? 
yes, of course. Uh, first of all, I'm I think happy to hear that we have this new approach with uh, like mission angle, because you know sometimes we talk a lot about the research innovation, but I think it's not a goal per se. It's just a tool. It's a tool to achieve a common goal or like a common mission. So I think it's a great kind of the change of of, of approach. It and uh, how can we uh, what, what can we take out of that? You know, I think it's very important the cooperation. I think it's also force us a little bit to cooperate more, to get out from the silos and to be more effective and efficient. Yes, we then not only look on uh, one particular interest of one particular group, but then we can combine it and really do something important and which is really important for society. And as you always said that, you know, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go, you know, far, go together. And I think this is also like uh, what the idea be behind it. So, um, and unfortunately, we used to, especially in Poland, work in the silos. And I think it's not good. It's not really good for really social, economic development. So I think uh, the mission, the cooperation, the cluster, the cooperation between different clusters, because, because not only actually one cluster, um, it's not enough, I think, at the moment. Especially that we, as, as uh, in Novo, we work a lot in circular economy, in transformation towards circular future, where this involvement of different stakeholders is crucial and the cooperation between different stakeholders is crucial. So I hope that this new framework is really kind of facilitate and like um, uh, support uh, this cooperation and at the end of the day to achieve this uh, common goal as a more as a more sustainable future that's from my point of view it's really important with what you said uh, thank you for that and now uh, let's check what science uh, think about it uh, professor bosse the floor is yours thanks okay no first thank for the invitation I'm not sure that I am innovator in science, but okay, we will go in this way. Uh, if uh, I like to define the, uh, the clusters, we have the six clusters, they reflect the, the global challenges. But uh, what do I mean? This is really the definition of the problem that we must resolve. To resolve the problem, we need to, to change the, the, the philosophy from the institutional to more personal. Uh, communication and uh, creating the the, uh, the team. So uh, the team. So we need to to have the new networks that will be de dedicated to resolve the the, the problems that are defined by uh, in the clusters. But we know that we have the existing uh, networks that must be extended in the future to uh, for this. And in this way, we have the chance to to invitate or to be new players, I mean about the less excellent countries like Poland. So it is a chance for us. And the next is uh, the mission. For me, the mission is, uh, the the, it is a solution of the real problem. It is important for the society. So we're from, the answer from the science is to create the complementary international uh, teams on the base of the consortia there are from the from the networking and finally where we have the more open science i mean that uh, researchers sharing the knowledge data infrastructure and etc so it will be the really from my opinion the the the, the final uh, way where will we go in the uh, evolution from the horizon 2020 to horizon to europe so, this is my uh, opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, I totally agree that it's a great uh, chance. And because uh, science uh, should be always close to the industry. Uh, so, uh, Director Andolfo, please. Good afternoon, everybody. So, from my side, uh, yeah, the new cluster approach is really interesting because uh, it's giving the opportunity for industry not to create only better products, but also to put together the interest of industries with the interest of society, of uh, agricultural business, creating something better and uh, uh, 
especially from the economical perspective, uh, more important for the development uh, of the of the country and especially region. Talking about cluster, I love the approach of the biodiversity of the resilience because this can help a lot the industry to get uh, a better approach on the market, having better products, and especially focusing with a really uh, real approach on the uh, bioeconomical perspective. Uh, the challenge of circular economy, for sure, it's uh, um, now really um, take all and uh, uh, I can say uh, well designed and to put together um, policy, industry and uh, science together. That's my point. Thank you very much uh, for these extremely interesting points of view uh, from different uh, perspectives. It is now clear that uh, Horizon Europe is for everyone. Uh, it's also clear that uh, for Europe to achieve its uh, ambitious goals, cooperation in uh, quadruple helix, uh, which recognizes four major actors in the innovation systems, policy, science, industry and society is essential. The use of this model not only engages uh, and better re reflects uh, the needs of the society, but also accelerates uh, the transfer of research and innovation results to practice uh, on market. At the same time, uh, the European Green Deal strategy and the Horizon Europe program place great emphasis on making the green transition a just transition, because only then uh, it will actually happen. In face of the uh, climate emergency, a uh, just and fair transition towards uh, carbon neutrality should be carried out in order not to leave anyone behind, exactly as uh, Dr. Birvert, Birvert already said. Technological uh, changes uh, bring many great opportunities, uh, but uh, they are no risk-free. Also in the EU, the capacity of private and public actors uh, to undertake state-of-the-art technological research and uh, innovation differs between member states. This innovation divide between leaders and underperforming countries prevents uh, the EU from exploiting its R&I potential to the full and thus possess a major threat to its economic growth prosperity and social stability. Therefore, I would like to address the next question to our guest from the European Commission. How can Poland effectively use the R&I of, uh, of uh, clusters and missions to actively engage in Europe's transformation and become one of the leaders of the European Green Deal? So maybe this time I will ask firstly uh, Dr. Reeve. Neville, please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. So if I understand correctly, your focus is on the particular circumstances of Poland and also to be um, a leader in the Green Deal. Well, um, four or, or even five, but four certainly of our missions are so um, critically important to the Green Deal, um, the soil, the oceans, the sense are not quite so much. Um, we, we haven't um, looked at this from a kind of national perspective. I mean, clearly there is a strong connection with the national, but up to now we've tackled this and developed the idea of these missions as pan-European issues, issues which have relevance across Europe. As you know, we have also looked at the role that citizens can play in developing these approaches and um, Poland was one of the countries which was um, in the exercise we ran last year to um, connect with citizens. These were specially organized events, um, uh, randomly selected citizens to identify the uh, key issues which were important to them and we see the opportunity to actually speak with citizens, to involve citizens right the way through the, the mission itself. Um, 
We have uh, a meeting which will be taking place shortly. We are working with um, national experts, of course, Polish experts um, included in that. Um, we have, um, I think, already something in the region of three to 400 people involved. And where we, we see this, um, if you like, space needing further definition is how can we make the connection between what is done, what is tackled at the national level, which is going to be relevant to our missions. Um, how do we set up the systems, the governance, which are going to be so important, if you like, to create a, a broader portfolio than just the EU work itself? So it's in that context that I see, um, you know, your the answer really to the question of how does Poland get involved? Um, now, what it contributes to Poland, um, I hope the answer is probably the same as for all countries in the sense, really, it is, it is the fact that Missions are not just addressing um, problems that we've identified, it's finding solutions that problems are relevant to you. So in a sense that the work we're doing through this mission is actually contributing to the issues which you or yourself would have identified as being extremely important. And your contributions, in a sense, are feeding the mission. So it's a sort of two-way process. Now, if you're asking me in a wider sense about the, I mean, I, I think I, I probably will duck that question. How does this mission itself um, contribute to the, if you like, the research and innovation performance, the the widening participation, all those sorts of issues. That's that's another issue, and I'm not sure that's something which um, we've even got into at the moment yet. That's perhaps an issue really more co closely connected with the research and innovation angle. And as I've already said, the missions are much broader than that. Research and innovation drives a mission, but it is really tackling issues which are going to be relevant um, and um, not just relevant, I mean, which are much, much broader in nature than the research innovation itself. So I'm sorry if I didn't answer directly your question. But all I'm emphasizing is the fact that what Poland does is going to be extremely relevant to our missions and what we do with the missions will be very relevant to Poland. Thank you, Neville. Thank Still, you. it's uh, really open-minded. So let's check uh, how it uh, will look like from the cluster's perspective. Uh, Dr. Uh, Bierwert, please. Yeah, um, th th thank you very much, um, Tarzan. If you, if you allow, um, I'll just start with, with a few um, general remarks on, on the Green Deal and then, then um, go uh, dive uh, deeper um, by, by giving a number of examples uh, for the Polish context from, from, from Cluster 5. Um, the, the Green Deal, as, as you also already described, and as you know, um, is, is aiming to, to make uh, Europe the first uh, climate neutral uh, continent by 2050. We are um, currently in, a, um, in the middle of a, a process to um, set the so-called uh, 2030 uh, climate target plan, so to increase our emission reduction ambition to 55%. Uh, and that's why we are working, um, and notably uh, the uh, DG Klima, uh, with uh, the first Vice President Timmermans on the so-called Fit for 55 package, so where we are looking at important issues like revising the emission trading system or the energy efficiency um, directive. Um, but it's indeed not um, only about the regulatory um, aspects and it's not only about the technological aspects, but um, I'm, I'm very grateful, Thomas, that you um, um, also underlined in, in your moderation uh, the, the aspects of the social dimension, the just transition dimension, uh, which we are also addressing at a European level. It's not part of the, today's discussion, but I, I wanted here to mention particularly the just transition um, fund which is um, aiming to make sure that no one uh, is uh, left behind because indeed there are um, regions which are much more affected by this enormous transformation we, we have to, to, to undergo if you look at uh, the carbon intensive um, regions. And of course from the research um, di directive there's a lot we can um, contribute and Poland can contribute from a technological aspect but also from a non-technological aspect, um, you know that already in, 20, uh, in Horizon 2020, we have been aiming at mainstreaming the uh, social sciences and humanities aspect, SSH, 
um, where we are looking how to increase uh, the citizens' engagement, the stakeholder um, and engagement. We are looking at uh, aspects of social um, innovation, uh, so to embed it, to mainstream it in, in, in throughout all, all the clusters. Now, if I can um, go by way of example a little bit deeper into um, cluster five, which uh, I, I think will and will be quite um, interesting and important also for for, for Polish uh, stakeholders to to contribute. So, climate science, energy, and and transport. Um, let me quote uh, from the cluster five. For instance, destination um, two, which is looking at cross-sectoral uh, solutions and which wants to um, promote research and innovation activities in areas which are linked to um, batteries, to um, storage, to electrification of, of transport. And where I know that uh, Poland already in the past and in the present, I'm sure in the future, is, is very um, active to contribute uh, to this um, uh, important uh, development, um, which has to be seen in the context of the, the, the decarbonization. Destination 2 is looking at climate uh, neutral cities. Um, and uh, there are a number of um, uh, Polish uh, cities and, and stakeholders in the cities, which I'm, I'm sure will be interested and have already endeavored to pa participate in look to look in a systemic uh, uh, cross-sectoral way. Uh, what can we do to uh, make our cities more livable from a, a pollution point of view, from an emission point of view, but also to look at uh, architectural um, uh, issues, climate um, adaptation um, issues and where also the missions uh, and in particular the city's mission uh, to which uh, Neville um, has been referring will play an important role. Take destination three uh, energy supply which uh, will look at research topics uh, related to uh, renewable energy and energy systems and grids and where Poland already now um, is extremely successful and active uh, if you take, for example, the um, off, uh, uh, wind uh, offshore technology. Um, take destination four, which is more looking not, not on the energy supply, but on the energy demand uh, side, uh, where a lot still has to be do, done also on the RNI side when it comes to energy efficiency in buildings. As you know, they are consuming a lot. Um, when it comes to uh, cooling uh, now in the winter and to heating in, in, in the summer and uh, where research uh, still can achieve a lot in the Green Deal um, agenda. And of course, also Destination 4 is looking at industrial processes, at energy intensive industries. Um, if you take steel, uh, cement, uh, for instance, how to, uh, to lower and reduce emissions in the in industrial uh, processes. And the last um, desti destination I wanted to, to, to highlight here also in and for the Polish um, um, aspect and context is destination five, uh, which is looking at um, transport um, issues, in particular at uh, um, promoting uh, uh, zero emission road transport. And there you have the link again to the ba important battery technology. It's looking at aviation, clean aviation, uh, sustainable fuels. It's looking at waterborne transport, so inland water, but also uh, on oceans and, 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 and seas. Um, so all areas which are extremely important for Poland, where Poland is already active and successful, and I'm sure will also successfully um, participate in, in the calls. Um, I will now not go uh, because of the time limits into into cluster six, but of course cluster six from a green deal perspective, I just wanted to mention is of course also extremely important and will also be interesting and important for Poland. It looks at issues of sustainable uh, farming. You know that uh, there's a, a commissioner of Polish origin who is uh, um, driving the agricultural uh, portfolio and we are working very closely with his team, DG Agriculture, on uh, sustainable agricultural um, issues. But the cluster is also about biodiversity, bioeconomy, uh, circular economy, and uh, water issues. So I hope I've been able to, to enlist a number of, of issues which, uh, which show uh, the importance, but uh, clearly also a good case 
uh, to have uh, Polish stakeholders participating very successfully in our new um, instrument. Back to you. Thank you. It wasn't an easy question, so I'm really glad that you cope with it. So thank you very much. So uh, I think, I believe that we already have a complete and advanced uh, picture of how we can uh, take advantage of the opportunities offered by clusters and missions. The question that our audience would probably would like to ask right now is uh, how to prepare well uh, for participation in the Horizon Europe and actively become a change. Without undue delay, let us listen to the voices of innovation leaders. Yes, Professor Bosse, you are the leaders who know best uh, from their own experience uh, how to do it. So let's start from the science, Professor Bosse. Okay, okay, you know, go to science. It will be an example of our, of, uh, our of my university now, but I am rector. So, the first of all is the strategy. I remember that I started with the to be the, uh, with the started on the management of the university, but uh, obtaining the position of the vice rector of the uh, science and international cooperation. Uh, I decided to, to create a strategy that will be more oriented for the international cooperation. So it was natural. Why? But. Uh, I hope that it will be better to concentrate on the global problems and to find the, the experts, the leaders that can give us possibility to be the players on the, the global research market. We are from the side to, to make the, the analysis of our potential uh, to, to give the really answer from the, from the main question. So it was the, the first of one. The second uh, step in this strategy was defined to, to, to define a new structure of the university that will be more dedicated for the science. I mean that we, we, have the, we know that we have the structure of the faculties, departments and institutes, but they are more, mostly oriented for the, for the education. And the science must be independent, so in the frame of the priority research areas, we decide to create the leading research groups. They are interdisciplinary, they uh, give us the internal network and have the connection by uh, international experience from the postdocs, for example. So in this way, we have also the, the uh, international networks. But for this, for, for this leading research group, it was necessary to create the administration that will be uh, really a, like bridge between the researchers and administration. I mean about the officers, have, they have the, the, the competence on the uh, high level, but it is also the, the next uh, uh, step in the reconstruction of the uh, structure of the university. After this, we were ready for the networking on the institutional level. So, we are the member of the, the institutional network, like European uh, University Association, but also the thematic uh, networks are dedicated of the uh, dedicated of the research area in our university. If we are the member, we have the chance to for the networking that is more dedicated for some programs. I mean about the European programs, not only but national too. And in the consequence, we have the chance to extend the mobility between the, uh, between the institution where we have the, the, the reconnection dedicated, for example, for the PhD students. So it was the next step. Now we uh, have the, some programs in the frame of the uh, PhD, uh, PhD schools for, uh, school, for, sorry, for example, and we have the, the permanent exchange that was now is impossible, but we know why, by the pandemic. So, but finally, I think that the, the step that we now, where we now, uh, we, where we are now, is uh, we are open for the international researchers that I like to work together with us in, in the frame of the leading research group. And we see that if you have, we have the, the, the researchers that are coming to us and like to work with one of our researchers, we are more open for the for the for the programs and application, and we have the more success 
success for the applic uh, in application for the for the for the project. So in this way, we like to be more open university for the international cooperation. But I think the, that it is important that if any research like to to research problem, it must work with you. No. So this is the, 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 the plan for me in the near future to have more members from the other countries in our university, especially in the research, reading research group. So it's my turn. Thank you, Professor. Uh, and now, uh, Director Andolfo, what uh, you could advise to our viewers? Yeah, my advice in this moment is that uh, for uh, the Green Deal challenge and the Horizon Europe challenge is not uh, any longer uh, that if you have a nice good idea, go through, a, uh, go through a tender, go through a call, a proposal and so on. Now you have to think how you can be helpful and useful inside a systemic solution, especially circular systemic solution in which industry, agricultural, politics and science can work together for uh, common interest. Uh, this is really important, especially talking about uh, industry and what uh, was said before about the destination four, in which we are focusing a lot, how we can be uh, as much as possible energy neutral, or how can we put uh, uh, our effort and our, uh, we can say consumption of uh, raw materials, energy, uh, all the things that is needed for big industries to, to run and to create wellness and, uh, you know, uh, higher and better uh, um, society, we can say, uh, to be also part of a circular systemic solution. That means uh, focusing a lot on the waste management, on the energy management, and how to put together common efforts to have, uh, um, I can say, value chains that can be integrated between the different uh, uh, segments. Can be agricultural, can be uh, industry, polymeric industry, like we are. Uh, the other, the other suggestion that I can give about uh, the creating new ideas and new proposals new system systemic solutions is to be as much as possible cross-sectoral because uh, in this moment uh, uh, it's really important how also uh, you can act uh, not only in the market but also in the society to don't leave uh, nobody behind so that's also the suggestion uh, not only giving work as big industry but also as act acting um, in uh, with a primary role in the social uh, in the social part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Director Andolfo. And last but not least, Dr. Schnick, uh, where is the secret? First of all, I think be open-minded. That's I think the the biggest secret, and be open for opportunities, possibilities for new connection, partnership, and now close uh, yourself for interesting uh, partners. Uh, and secondly, of course, build networks. Networks, as before, speakers said, like cross-sectoral sectors from uh, partners from from completely sometimes different uh, fields because this gives a strength to consortia. Always in consortia we need academia, we need business, we need NGO, uh, we need some uh, social uh, institution, society institution. So that's why when you think about applying for such fund, we have to really have a strong and vast network and to put this proposal together. And as was said before, if we have some solution, some technology, it's not enough. We always have to think how it fit to the global answer for some global challenge, I would say. And what, you know, part we can play in the consortium, you know, we this have to like uh, develop and act much bigger than only one a particular solution. So that's the, that's the one. And also for academia, because sometimes we apply with like big universities uh, for, for Horizon. Sometimes they think 
I think, into abstract way, into scientific way. So for them, it's my advice to a little bit more practical. And that's why we need this business angle, these companies, these, I don't know, SMEs partners, which, you know, put it a little bit more on the ground and to more on implementation uh, level. So that's my suggestions. Thank you very much uh, for these uh, great suggestions. Uh, dear audience, it's worth remembering uh, all the tips and tricks uh, because in a moment, when uh, new calls are opened, they will prove invaluable. Unfortunately, uh, time is passing quickly uh, and we are approaching to the end of the session. So this is a good time to sum up. Horizon Europe is investing to shape our future. Please finish the sentence on behalf of your institution and from personal point of view. I'm waiting for Horizon Europe because... And maybe we'll start uh, from uh, our guest from EC, Dr. Birvert, please. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I, I would say I'm, I'm waiting for, for Horizon Europe um, because it's um, clearly a very much uh, need, needed instrument to, to steer and accelerate the green transition uh, we, we have been uh, discussing to lead the EU uh, now during the very um, difficult recovery uh, um, process to, to make it fit for, for the future. And it's an instrument also which uh, is the right uh, answer to solve our, our global um, problems in a cross-sectoral and cross-border way because the challenges cannot be only or exclusively addressed at local, uh, regional or national level. Thank you. Dr. Reef. Yes, we're waiting for Horizon Europe because this will signal the start of our missions-based approach, which will tackle issues uh, uh, developed through consultation with citizens, meeting the needs of citizens and involving citizens in, its, in their implementation. Thank you. Director Andolfo. For Horizon Europe, because uh, for sure uh, R&Ds of industries can realize dream uh, of new development uh, that uh, the, the business, st the standard business uh, time frame, are not allowing to. So that for sure, uh, you know, we're waiting a lot to start some uh, nice proposal and op uh, hopefully get funded. In that. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Schneck. I look forward for New Horizon uh, to help really scale up the new great circular sustainable solution. Uh, because I think now there is a lot of great interesting ideas on the market which can help, you know, our, uh, our problem, our issue. But still there is a big problem with scaling up this this solution so i hope that you know through this uh, cross sectoral cooperation and through this mission and cluster cooperation we could really uh, make this uh, new innovation big and implemented on a really vast scale thank you very much and professor bosse why are you waiting for horizon europe yeah, I'm waiting for the Horizon Europe, hmm. but I hope that it will be international open science built on the young research, young researchers and interdisciplinary teams. So I think that it's a key also for the Poland that we have the some limits, I mean about the researchers like me, but the younger also from my team and my university don't have any limits and I think that they don't have the problem to create the the networks to create a consortium with the business, also the society. So I think that it is a, the chance and uh, uh, and the rule of the Poland in the future will be bigger than in, in the previous programs. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to uh, thank all the speakers for participating in the event and an extremely interesting uh, and also fruitful discussion. I'm uh, convinced that the new opportunities created by clusters and missions uh, are now more understandable and accessible for all. Dear audience, uh, 
Thank you for joining us. And if you would like to know more about cluster, about clusters, it's uh, my privilege to invite you to the week with clusters starts on Monday. Day by day, every day, we will present specific clusters, clusters in details. So registration is open and hope to see you. More information can be found on our website and in our social media. Albert Einstein said, the world as we have created, it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. So be the change. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, dear guests, let us begin our next part. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Horizon Europe as a programme seems to be overall a bit more impact-focused than Horizon 2020. Uh, partnerships exist to support Horizon Europe, thus their impact, strategy and effectiveness need to be demonstrated with clear evidence. And right now we'll have a chance to listen to more and hear more about new European partnerships. Ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce the moderator, Eva Kocinska-Lange, Director of National Centre for Research and Development Office in Brussels. Welcome. It's great to, hear you. great to see you here and great to hear you. Are you here with us? Can you hear us? Yes, yes, hello. Uh, thank you very much for your introduction and good afternoon from uh, Brussels, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and welcome to the session on the new European partnerships. It's quite an important topic and also quite a challenge for us at the moment to discuss uh, it only within uh, one hour. Uh, and we will cover, uh, we will try to cover uh, different uh, 49 different initiatives that are now being prepared by the European Commission, together with member states uh, and together with the whole European research innovation uh, community. Uh, discussions are ongoing for, for quite some time. We started, I think, in 2018, and uh, this is the uh, last, uh, uh, last, last uh, stage, I would say, of the, of the preparation. And it's very, very important to understand uh, them, to understand how they differ uh, from uh, regular calls and why it's really worth uh, taking pardon them. And I sincerely hope that together with uh, with all the speakers, I will manage to inspire uh, you to take a closer look at them and to get involved uh, in order to actually fully participate in, in Horizon Europe. Uh, but uh, before we start, I would like to brief you, uh, briefly introduce the speakers uh, and myself as well. Um, I am running the NCBR office in Brussels, which is operating in partnership with uh, Business and Science Poland. It's still a relatively new uh, initiative. We started not so uh, um, long, long before the, uh, the pandemic, um, but we hope for, for a very interactive uh, activities uh, as soon as uh, the crisis will be um, over. Uh, we are, of course, uh, active anyway, but on an on, on online uh, level. Our main goal is to represent the interests of the Polish uh, RNI community in the discussions with the European Commission, but also with other EU partners. Like They, they represent uh, offices uh, of different countries similar to ours. And as mentioned uh, during the opening uh, panel discussions, we are really there to facilitate the contact with, uh, with Brussels for, for all of you and to promote uh, Polish success stories also in Brussels to make Poland more uh, visible. Uh, well, um, European partnerships are one of the main points on our agenda, actually. And this is why I'm moderating this uh, session. And I'm very, very honored and happy uh, to have today with us such experienced experts uh, as, uh, as speakers. Uh, you can uh, see us um, all at the moment, and I will uh, introduce them to you now. So, our first speaker uh, will be Maria Lake from the European Commission. Uh, she's a policy officer at the Common Missions and Partnership Service at the Director General for Research Innovation. In her daily work, she contributes to the development of the EU Research Innovation Policy, uh, and she's involved in the design, implementation and monitoring of European partnerships since the beginning. I, I mentioned already 2018 and uh, back then she, she chaired the special working group on the European partnerships uh, that was developing the basic requirements and strategies for, for those uh, initiatives. Our second, so second speaker will be uh, uh, Dr. Adam Piotrowski, uh, who is the president of the board of uh, Vigo System, uh, and also at the same time uh, um, president of Polish technological platform Photonics, uh, and vice president of the board of Polish Chamber of Commerce and High Technology, and definitely uh, last but not least, uh, and quite important faction in this uh, uh, discussion here is the board of, uh, of uh, member of the board of stakeholders of partnership Photonics 21. So uh, he's taking active participation and um, active role in the development of the European photonics and, and microelectronics. 
Um, our next um, uh, panelist is Professor Joanna Kurczyska from the Mineral and Energy Economy Research Institute of the Polish Academy of Sciences. And at the same time, she's also the Deputy Dean of uh, Cooperation and um, Development of the Faculty of Management uh, at the uh, AGH University of Science and Technology in Krakow. Uh, she's the expert in the circular economy and also in the use of life cycle assessment to analyze the impact on process uh, and product environment. And in, in, in addition to that, uh, on a voluntary basis, she's the chairwoman of the board of the waste management and recycling cluster and the director of the Highway Technology and Innovation Institute. And she's also involved in the clean energy transition partnership preparations. And uh, last but uh, not least, we have together with us uh, Dr. Jerzy Żółtak, and he's the director of the Aviation Technology Center at Łukasiewicz Research Network, Institute of Aviation. And uh, he is uh, scientifically focused on aviation aerodynamics, and he's been involved in European projects for over 15 years uh, now, and uh, teams that... Uh, uh, he led uh, applied successfully to different framework programs and clean sky and clean to sky initiatives so which is crucial for the uh, topic of this uh, session and now he's involved also in the development of the clean aviation partnership so uh, that was the introductory uh, part of the of the speakers and thank you uh, all once again for accepting my invitation and for being here uh, today with uh, with us um, I would like to briefly address the audience uh, now. Uh, I would just uh, like to remind you that, uh, that there, there is this chat function uh, that you all see on the screen. And please, uh, to communicate uh, live with us, uh, post your questions and comments uh, during the whole sessions. And of course, probably we will not be able to answer all of them, but we will uh, surely try to, to, to at least uh, discuss some of the issues raised by you and the rest of them will be managed uh, uh, later on after the uh, the, the conference. Um, so um, I think that we can uh, kick off the panel at the moment and uh, this will be done by Maria uh, with a short introduction uh, to the topic of European partnerships uh, so we would all understand what the European partnerships really are and what is their role in achieving the EU's uh, strategic objectives of, as we all know, uh, green, climate neutral and, and digital Europe. So, um, Maria, the floor is yours and I hope the slides will come uh, shortly. Thank you so much, Eva, and good afternoon to everyone. I'm, I'm very happy to be presenting in this session on European, European partnerships. I know that the Polish stakeholders are very keen in uh, also participating more in partnerships uh, in Horizon Europe. So uh, I, I hope that my presentation will allow to, to guide you a little bit in this uh, path. Uh, I hope that you, you now see my slides. Mm. Yes, so in, uh, in Horizon Europe, uh, as Eva mentioned also, we have a, a very different approach to partnerships. So as many of you know, partnerships are not a new element uh, in the framework program, but we have completely uh, revised this and this has been long in the making. We indeed started already in 2018 when we had the interim evaluation of Horizon 20. And just uh, a, a brief overview of what are the, the key features of this new approach. The first is indeed uh, the fact that the partnerships are expected to be impact-oriented and strategic. This means that uh, they have to really demonstrate how they contribute to achieving the, the common EU objectives such as the, the Green Deal, the digital transitions, recovery and so on. And also uh, by strategic, it is meant that they have to demonstrate that they do it more effectively than the Union could do it alone uh, via these traditional uh, calls of Horizon Europe. Then uh, the, the second uh, element is that we have um, a major simplification uh, of European partnerships. So we call them all European partnerships and we have three uh, simple implementation forms, co-programmed, co-funded, institutionalized. I get back to that uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, but basically we um, 
rationalize the, the language and the landscape of instruments uh, that we have, uh, because currently in Horizon 2020, we had a, a lot of different acronyms for practically the same things. We had uh, ERANET, uh, EGP co-fund, uh, CPPPs, and so on. So hopefully this will already um, help uh, newcomers to navigate better. And finally, all partnerships will have to follow life cycle criteria that are actually in Horizon Europe uh, legal base. And the, the intention of this criteria is that we have a, a much better um, common understanding of, of what the partnerships are expected to deliver. And key elements there are, of course, impact, uh, synergies, coherence, transparency and openness and, and also flexibility in implementation. So this is about the new approach. Um, now, what is common uh, to all European partnerships? Um, this is to say a couple of words before I go to the different uh, forms of partnerships. I already talked about the common criteria and the strategic orientation. But I think it's, uh, it's uh, necessary to also say that the two key preconditions for launching uh, a European partnership is that they do have to have a strategic research innovation agenda before we, we actually um, adopt, uh, adopt or la launch the partnership. And this will then prove that the partnership has this kind of uh, common long-term vision. And the second element uh, is uh, long-term commitments from the partners. And for that, we have collected uh, commitment letters uh, from private and public partners. Um, all partnerships are implemented via annual work plans, work programs. This is how uh, you can translate this seven-year, ten-year long-term vision into practical implementation. And um, all partnerships have to be systematic, so they really have to look what are the other types of initiatives that they want to collaborate with, and also they need to think what are the other types of activities that they want to do besides a course for proposals. So really the main difference uh, of partnerships comes from uh, the way uh, they're implemented and their, their legal form. Now, uh, the first uh, simplest form of partnership is the co-programmed one. I, uh, if I wanted to give it uh, like a, a tag, <laughs> then I would say it's, uh, it's a division of labor. Uh, it is the, the simplest. Um, it follows the contractual public-private partnership uh, model very much. It's implemented based on a memoranda of understanding. Um, and um, why it's a division of labor is because um, while both partners pool their resources together towards a common strategic agenda, then the union um, contribution is implemented as normal Horizon Europe calls via the work program and comitology and so on. And uh, the partners' contributions are implemented under their own responsibility. Um, and uh, this co-program partnership is uh, signed with one or several associations. So the association represent, um, represents the partners and also carries important functions uh, for such a partnership. Now we go to the co-funded um, European partnership, which is, let's say, medium in terms of complexity to set up. And its hashtag would be that it is an integrated program, but with distributed implementation. Such a partnership follows uh, ERANET co-fund logic, uh, but let's say it's much bigger in size than before. Uh, its legal form is grant agreement that is uh, signed uh, between uh, consortia of partners uh, and, and the commission. Basically, it's implemented in a way that member states uh, design a, a joint program and then it is implemented under the responsibility. And this kind of partnership really pools uh, you know, funding from member states together into launching transnational calls um, and, and other activities. And since for such a partnership, you, you, you need to know who will be in the consortia. So usually these are the, the national funding authorities, uh, funding bodies. Um, but of course, the, the partnership will have also a, a broader governance. So it will have a, a, a governing body or equi equivalent, where besides these national funding bodies, you also need to um, ensure that uh, the relevant ministries at national level uh, are involved. Um, and, and in this uh, type of partnerships, it's really important to understand 
um, who are the, the exact beneficiaries uh, and who will be applying to calls for proposals. And uh, now the, the, the third and the most complex type of partnerships are the institutionalized ones. Uh, here it's then with an integrated program with, with centralized uh, management. And um, why it is the most complex? It's because the Commission has to prepare a legislative proposal, it has to carry out an impact assessment, and then it is negotiated in the Council, in the case of Article 187, or in the Council and Parliament, in the case of Article 185, and the European Innovation uh, Technology Institute. Um, and um, why it's also com most complex, let's say, or most integrated is because uh, uh, for this partnership implementation, you create a separate body to implement it. So a separate union body, such as joint undertaking um, or, um, or a national uh, body. Uh, for example, um, we have bonus uh, in the current period and in the future we'll have uh, metrology, which is Article 95. And um, because this kind of partnership is more uh, complex to implement, then Horizon Europe also specifies a higher threshold for this, uh, for launching this partnership. For example, um, here it is uh, uh, obligatory to have financial commitments. Um, that is one example. Um, or also the, the, the legal base, it said that uh, here one has to implement central management of financial funds. Uh, and also I had budget, budget indications for also the others, but here uh, for institutions partnerships, the, the union will invest most. So uh, around 10 uh, billion uh, euros that will be then matched by, by the partners from their part. And the commission adopted the proposals for Article 27 and 185 initiatives on the 23rd of February. Um, now, uh, when we come to the preparation of partnerships, um, what is perhaps good to know is just what we have already done. We have done, um, started already long ago, the strategic planning of uh, what are the priorities that to address with European partnerships. And this was a process that first started internally with big reflections on how to rationalize the, the number down and what are really the, the crucial priorities in, in uh, this funding period. And then we had also... Um, uh, quite lengthy and, and good discussion uh, with the member states in the, in the shadow strategic program committee where we really looked at each initiative uh, and, and all, the, all the priorities and scrutinized them properly. Um, I, I already said that we, we have adopted the commission proposal uh, and, and published also the impact assessments for the Article 185 and 7 candidates. Um, then uh, for all partnerships, so on our web page, we also have published uh, this kind of proposals uh, that is done together with the partners and, and commission. And the intention was exactly to, to try to lay down what these partnerships are about, what they want to achieve, uh, what are the implementation considerations. And also uh, this allows, uh, allowed us to increase the transparency of preparations. Um, while also help along planning of synergies, because only by having these descriptions and an understanding of what the partnerships are actually about uh, and what they, uh, they are to do, it's also for, for the different stakeholders easier to understand where they want to participate um, and so on. And also we have received uh, commitment letters uh, from the partnerships. Uh, something that's currently in the making, uh, we, we cannot go into detail to this today, but there will be also new governance structure uh, for partnerships, a strategic coordinating process, where we will be paying a lot of attention to the monitoring of partnerships. Now, uh, this is the result of the strategic planning. These are the, the 49 candidate European partnerships in, um, in Horizon Europe, uh, the co-funded and is it, uh, and co-program partnerships, sorry, are identified in the strategic plan that's also recently adopted. Um, and the institutions partnerships, which are uh, in this um, orange color, uh, then uh, for these, the Commission has, has prepared this proposal. As you can see, um, the types of partnerships, um, which are with member states primarily, the co-funded, they are really mostly in health uh, cluster, uh, but also in cluster six uh, for uh, agriculture and environment. And in Cluster 5, uh, we have also um, two partnerships, uh, uh, two co-funded partnerships. We have the clean energy transition and, and uh, uh, urban transition. 
Uh, and in cluster four and five, uh, they are dominated mostly uh, by partnerships with primarily with industry. But I hope that this overview also in the future, you will have a, have a good place to, to quickly see uh, which partnerships we have and which form do they correspond to. Now, uh, on my next slide, a uh, few words on the, on the timeline. So, um, the co-program partnerships are those that will be launched the first, which is also logical because they are the easiest to set up. We are currently uh, have our internal sort of validation of the memoranda of understanding, uh, and hopefully this will be signed um, uh, in June. Uh, we are planning a signature ceremony, hopefully um, colliding with the R&I date. Uh, then uh, the institutional partnerships, these are currently negotiated uh, in the Council. Uh, Portuguese presidency, I understand, wants to have a, a political agreement um, uh, by the end of its presidency, but uh, some elements, uh, especially the trialogues for metrology and some other things, will definitely also go to the Slovenian presidency. And the co-founded partnerships, um, they will be launched towards the end of this year or early next year. Uh, they take a bit more time also because we have to first put a call for program co-fund action in our work program. Then the consortia has to um, put forward the proposal. It will be evaluated and it will just take, uh, take some time. And uh, something also interesting for you, I think, is that um, by the end of this year, we hope to get ready with the first uh, biennial um, monitoring report. By biennial, it means every, uh, every second year. Uh, basically, that report would be setting the, the baseline uh, for the next reports. And the idea would be to really introduce the, the new partnerships, what they are about, um, and to, to have... Uh, uh, a basis for, for monitoring them. Uh, the next such reports are then planned for 23, then for 25, and then for 27. Good. And uh, final slide, which is useful uh, sources of information. Our partnership web, web page, I really uh, encourage you to, to have a look and, and uh, see um, what the partnerships are about. We have also the context there for individual partnerships. And I think my 15 minutes are up exactly. So Eva, the floor back to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, Maria. Indeed, perfect, uh, perfect timing. Uh, and I uh, understand also that the topic is maybe not the easiest one. So uh, now we have a great challenge, all of us, to explain to our audience um, how to actually uh, use them, how to understand them, and what to do about those European partnerships and uh, where to really find them. But before we will move to that, I actually would have one immediate question, Maria, to you. Uh, still about a topic you briefly mentioned, uh, which is uh, linked with synergies. We hear a lot of discussions uh, in general about synergies between Horizon Europe and um, structural funds, and namely a European um, um, Regional Development Fund. And uh, how does uh, this thing could work uh, in the case of European partnerships? Could you please elaborate a bit on that? Yes, happy to. Uh, so an, uh, an important novelty in Horizon Europe is the fact uh, that in Horizon Europe, in Article 15, uh, there is a, a specific new provision which basically allows to use cohesion policy funds, so the regional funds or maritime fisheries funds, they're all listed there, as national contribution to co-funded and institutionalized partnerships provided that they, of course, uh, meet all the fund-specific regulations. But this is very important change because um, this basically means that uh, this is recognized um, as, as your national contribution as if you were being, uh, investing from your own national budget. Because if you were to use uh, cohesion structural funds uh, in Horizon 2020, for example, in Eranet, then uh, you would uh, pay 100% from, from uh, structural funds, but in now you can really also benefit from this, uh, this co-funding uh, from, from the union side. Uh, this is very important um, element, especially also to get more countries involved. 
uh, because uh, in some countries the thematic programs especially are funded from uh, cohesion policy programs. Um, and, and also because this allows us also to pool uh, investments in towards common objectives. And I think the, the challenges that partnerships address are really pan-European and relevant for all. And just to add one small addition is that we are also expecting um, a state aid revision um, because as you know, the trans uh, partnership calls are transnational already. They are evaluated and have to follow a certain ranking list. And normally uh, you have to follow your state aid rules, but now um, uh, there is a, a, a small change which basically says that if nationally uh, you uh, will follow the Horizon Europe uh, funding rates uh, um, and, and uh, cost models, then uh, you can actually get exemption from the state aid rules. So this also, it's voluntary. No, it's not something that you have to use, but at least it's a new possibility, um, again, to simplify. Thanks a lot. Uh, indeed, that's uh, especially important, the state ed rule, uh, also for, for the companies. Okay, um, so uh, now um, the question actually one by one to, to, uh, to our uh, panelists. Uh, uh, we have to discuss all those three different types of partnerships, and that's why I invited uh, you as being involved in uh, exactly different types of, uh, of partnerships, uh, uh, co-programmed, uh, co-funded, and uh, institutionalized. Uh, they are a bit uh, different in structure, uh, but um, uh, the, the most important thing, uh, I think, that the, it's the, the benefits, the, the benefits that are there from participating in uh, partnerships from for, for the companies, for Polish companies and Polish research institutions. And uh, maybe we should start by, uh, by this uh, topic. So I would have a question, uh, firstly, to, uh, to Adam uh, about uh, the benefits for the companies. And also, is there a place there? Because we hear that this is uh, something huge, definitely something very big, uh, big initiatives. Is there a place there for small and medium sized enterprises? Adam, the floor is yours. Uh, th th thank you very much. Uh, so uh, uh, certainly, the, the partnership uh, uh, is a, a place for uh, for SMEs to be to uh, to in be involved in uh, in creating the partnership, uh, programming uh, the next next period, next perspective. Uh, to, to define a strategic research agenda and uh, to network, uh, to, 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 to make contacts with uh, uh, hundreds or thousands of different uh, other partners that, uh, that are willing to collaborate on, uh, on different uh, research projects, on, uh, on development of new, new products and uh, uh, going forward. So, uh, uh, so, for example, in the Photonics uh, uh, partnership, uh, there is uh, around 5,000 different uh, SMEs, uh, high-tech companies, uh, uh, and they are uh, they are meeting each other during uh, annual annual uh, general meetings, uh, uh, discussing uh, on uh, uh, on brainstorming sessions about uh, what what should be a topic of next call or, uh, or next uh, uh, what, what are the propositions to the European Commission uh, to, to to program next. Uh, uh, next research project. So, uh, in terms of the photonics uh, society, we had a really great balance between industry and uh, and science. It was like fifty to fifty uh, uh, involvement of uh, of companies and uh, uh, research agencies. Uh, so, uh, so it's. it's uh, it's a great opportunity to, for for everybody to join the club. Uh, it's not uh, n nothing closed. Uh, the, the partnerships are open for for anyone to uh, that want to be involved, want to uh, design the future together with other European partners. Thanks a lot. Indeed, that sounds quite impressive from the perspective of a one single company that you can actually have an impact on the work program of, of what's written there and what uh, it's going to be funded. Uh, uh, I think it uh, it's, uh, takes uh, uh, really, it, it's, it's actually worth uh, the, uh, the effort to, to work a bit on, on, on joining those associations, developing co-program partnerships in order then to be there and to be really uh, the author kind of 
of the work program, not only the potential beneficiary. Uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, I would like to actually ask a bit of a similar question, uh, but now to Joanna, uh, about the benefits uh, for the research institutions uh, from participating in, in, in partnerships. Uh, could you please uh, say uh, to our audience a bit more about this? Uh, good, uh, good afternoon. Thank you for this question, really, because uh, there are uh, big uh, advantages for research institution. First of all, it's not only because of co close cooperation with industry, but also because of, uh, first of all, to see new challenges. As uh, the clean energy transition, it's a very broad subject. But within this broad subject, we could see the new challenges. We could see the the new direction, which is in policy, but also which is the uh, which shows uh, in which direction we uh, focus our research. So uh, that's one one of the benefit. Therefore, we can verify uh, also uh, the level of our idea and the level. Uh, what um, when we're doing the, the research, if we're going in right direction in case of application. And also in such a big partnership, we can uh, see, we can compare to each other, we can learn from each other. So that's the exchange of best practice but on the very innovative level. So for the, for the science, there are a lot of benefit uh, for the common cooperation. Okay. Uh, thanks. Uh, th thanks for uh, for your uh, uh, contribution on this. Um, we heard from uh, Maria presentations uh, that uh, actually you cannot really have a, a European partnership without the strategic uh, research innovation agenda. Uh, and uh, I would like to discuss a bit now um, what is it actually uh, and uh, how is it, um, how, it how, how the works on the development of the agenda look like and uh, how you can really uh, get get involved because that's also something not that typical for the uh, traditional, let's say, regular calls or proposals uh, in framework programs. And uh, I would like to ask uh, first uh, Jerzy, how is it? Because I know that you are very much involved in the discussions uh, about uh, clean aviation uh, partnership. So uh, that would be like really a first-hand uh, information uh, about uh, the involvement in this. Uh, hello. Uh Will come everybody. Uh, before they say about the uh, current uh, clean aviation uh, partnerships, uh, I would like to say about the uh, clean sky two preparation uh, agenda, because this is our first uh, steps, first uh, our experience uh, in uh, preparation this uh, part of of the uh, documents. Uh, uh, Institute of Aviation is the uh, member of the uh, small aircraft transport community, and uh, this community was uh, uh, asked by the preparatory group in Clean Sky 2 uh, to input uh, some uh, topics, some data uh, into the work program and strategy agenda for the uh, Clean Sky uh, too. It was for first uh, our experience in the preparation of the, uh, this kind of documents. I return to the uh, uh, strategy agenda for the clean aviation. Ah, oh, maybe the other comments. The strategy agenda uh, in the I think in all uh, institutional partnerships, uh, I have only experience the clean uh, sky and clean uh, aviation agenda is dominated uh, by the some uh, uh, institution uh, which is dominated by the uh, by uh, manufacturing uh, by, by the uh, by the producer. Uh, big producer. This uh, dependent on the construction of the of the these partnerships because these partnerships uh, is founded uh, co-founded by the uh, European Commission and and the main players uh, in my uh, uh, 
case the, the in my pl uh, players in the uh, aviation sector. The basic, the start, uh, the draft, the first version of Agenda uh, was prepared by the uh, advice council uh, for the um, advisory council for the. Uh, Aeronautics Research in Europe this is the special group uh, which worked for the European Commission, this uh, uh, set of the um, experts uh, from the aviation sector, uh, from the science, from the uh, producer, uh, from the academy. Uh, from Poland, uh, there are several people which uh, work in this uh, uh, council. And uh, after that, uh, the draft version uh, was uh, published and uh, public uh, in public consultation. Uh, in the uh, strategy agenda for the clean, clean aviation, this uh, uh, consultation starts, uh, if I remember, in the May or uh, June uh, uh, 2020, and uh, it was made in two steps. After uh, the, the second steps uh, was complete in the end of the November, and there is the typical uh, public consultation. Uh, uh, commission uh, prepared the uh, website uh, on which uh, uh, all people, the institution people, uh, uh, can put your comments, your um, propose to, to this uh, agenda. Uh, finally, uh, institute, uh, my institute uh, made some, uh, some comments, not only uh, uh, we, but uh, also our uh, colleagues from the community and our uh, small uh, enterprises uh, and uh, Finally, part of these comments was included in the agenda, part is not this typical action. Uh, now, uh, ah, this is not end of the consultation, because uh, in the end of the uh, 2020, Commission um, made the call for the uh, ideas. Uh, this call is end uh, in, in March of this year, the, the, the first results. And uh, uh, all institution uh, can prepare the proposal, which can be uh, pre uh, put additional value for the strategic agenda. Uh, if I well know, uh, the seven uh, uh, proposals was selected by the Commission, and now the uh, strategic agenda will be a little modified, dependent on the results of this uh, of this uh, call. This strategic agenda is the, the first element uh, on which we can present uh, our opinion, input our interests, uh, to, but the second uh, way, the second step is the made from based on this strategic agenda work prog program for the uh, for the partnerships and in this uh, level now this uh, a little extends the the, 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 the question uh, but uh, i would like to say uh, a little uh, on this level uh, this it is possible to to uh, to influence on on the, on the preparation of the work program by the uh, take part in the preparatory group uh, because uh, my institute uh, declared the, uh, to be a, a founding member of, of the clean aviation uh, partnerships we also uh, work with the other people in the preparating group and i uh, think that we have some influence on, on the results of this document. This, it will be the next document on which the, the, the call will be defined. Thanks. Okay. Uh...
thank you for, for for this. So it seems like you want to join the the the, the club, uh, as mentioned by Adam before, of, of the really the big uh, players on the aviation market. Uh, so we are keeping uh, fingers crossed uh, uh, for your active participation in, in this. And it's actually good that you also mentioned Clean Sky uh as as some um, reference to to your um experiences because those partnerships are obviously not uh, uh there from from nowhere uh this is a huge reorganization and simplification as maria mentioned of the landscape of different initiatives that were there for quite quite some time uh and i think uh, we could count uh, even more than 120 different initiatives uh, uh being operating uh, last last years and that's why uh the 49, uh, the number of 49 is actually uh, uh, quite a success uh, to, to of, of the European Commission and and, uh, and also the member states and all partners to coordinate it a bit more, to join some initiatives and to simplify them, even if uh, at first that might not be that easy to uh, uh, to understand. Um, but uh, really, it, it it will be, I think, uh, much 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 easier. So um, I would like she also like to hear a bit of uh, from from Adam about the experiences of, of working on the strategic research and innovation agenda and this photonics uh, partnerships. How does it look like that? All right. So uh, in the partnership, we have uh, seven seven work groups. Uh, it, uh, we, we had them in, in Horizon 2020. Uh, it will be a slightly different uh, organization in uh, Horizon Europe. But uh, uh, generally, uh, uh, the, those work groups are, are dedicated to education, to uh, manufacturing, uh, to specific applications or, uh, uh, or, or sensors. Uh, and uh, inside of, of these work groups, uh, everyone have a uh, have a vote, uh, have a possibility to to, to discuss, uh, as uh, uh, possibility to propose or even reward the call, so everything is m matched to, to the needs of the uh, of the group of the of the partnership. And uh, uh, then uh, every, uh, in uh, general meeting, uh, we are voting uh, for for the best ideas and uh, uh, i had the pleasure to present in front of the uh, whole uh, board of stakeholders uh, the, the our ideas and uh, and it was uh, uh, interesting uh, discussions interesting uh, collaborations and and it's actually actually the, the uh, initialization point for further projects uh, so it's uh, uh, once, once you read the uh, the core name or, or, or subject, uh, then it's uh, usually too late. There are already uh, collaborators that that, that are, are working together on on such uh, such uh, calls uh, that already prepared some initial documents and uh, and uh, so so the moment uh, the call is uh, initiated, uh, it's uh, usually too late. Uh, to make a good good proposal, so, uh, uh, so, 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 so it's it's good to be uh, there on during during the meet meetings in Brussels or recently uh, during the meetings uh, uh, on on virtual uh, level, but uh, uh, from those meetings you see how the uh, all the uh, your society is uh, is growing or, or changing what. What will, what will be the subjects uh, um, now, soon, or in uh, in near future? So, uh, uh, for the companies, for the universities, for the institutes, you know how to invest. You know how to prepare, uh, reschedule your strategic agenda for the company. Uh, so, uh, for for uh, for my company, uh, when we first joined the the, the, the partnerships, uh, we had uh, we had already idea about how to how to drive the company, but uh, learning from uh, from from the data that uh, that we had from the reports that we prepared together with the partnership, we could change the way uh, the company is operating and uh, and change the whole strategy uh, towards um, the 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 more more specific goals that uh, that were defined. And uh, uh, after after five years, I'm I'm happy to to demonstrate the results of the company, which is. Uh, have now turned over at 
uh, more than two, two times larger than on the beginning and uh, and uh, we have a uh, engineering staff uh, three times larger prepared for, for for next next level objectives uh, that's a three fantastic occasion for for us to uh, to discuss about the future Thank you. Okay, so we heard how it uh, looks from the perspective of co-programmed and institutionalized partnerships. So uh, this is always linked with, with joining some association or some group of, of uh, stakeholders working on the uh, on the partnership. It's a bit different in terms of uh, co-funded uh, uh, partnership where, for example, NCBR is uh, involved. Uh, you may uh, know Iranets uh, mentioned also here before and partnerships are built Building on that uh, somehow, and one of the examples is the clean energy transition partnership that Joanna already mentioned. And uh, I would like to ask you a bit more about the details. So what are the, the main objectives, that, and why it's so important to use this uh, possibility? Because for Polish uh, uh, participants, that would actually mean uh, to somehow apply still to Horizon Europe, but actually not to Brussels directly, uh, but uh, somehow via NCBR as well as, as the, the partner of the co-funded. So the co-funding partner and uh, the budget for projects will actually go from uh, from from our, um, our national funding. Uh, but still the objectives are international. So uh, could you please uh, give us some examples uh, about the scale of this very wide topic in this partnership. Thank you very much. Yeah, the objectives, as you said, the, the main goal is connected closer to European policy, but uh, this subject, this particular subject is very important uh, for Poland because uh, the energy transition uh, has now, it's now, uh, yeah. it's really started and um, it's uh, focusing on uh, um, also on environmental performance of any, of any project uh, using the environmental footprint, for example, methodology, life cycle thinking. So the, the uh, transformation of energy system for Polish economy is, is a crucial. That's why the clean, uh, the clean energy and transition program, which is available, we could see that it's cover the interdisciplinary uh, subject. So it's not focusing only on RTD uh, and the technology, but it's focusing also on social aspect of job creating activity, on cost effective technology. So it's much, much broader uh, than uh, only technology. That's the point which is very important because we could have a view, broader view. That's, that's the first point and what has already been uh, underline the impact and implementation. This is the, uh, the, the criteria which could be or which are important in uh, on the European uh, Union level. So the transition to clean energy system, we know that required technological and societal shift and uh, it's really needed a very often disruptive innovation uh, which we could um, uh, I hope support in such a solution and uh, how it was said before as a company can have a strategic view thanks they uh, thanks they know in which direction they go uh, we also uh, can cooperate closer on the broader aspect, on the future vision, and uh, I think this is the this is the important. So, from one point, it's an interdisciplinary as a as a subject, the broad subject, focusing mostly on uh, sustainable development goals, reaching sustainable development goals, Paris Agreement, and. Um, um, uh, clean, and and this uh, and this aspect of, of uh, and it's also sectoral integration. Uh, I think that uh, what you can see in this project, it's not strictly focusing on only on uh, uh, energy company, but this is the also connecting with with the different energy technology in different sectors. 
and uh, thanks to this we can uh, look for a symbiosis in digital transformation in resource efficiency which is which is very important for um, climate changes and for the energy so the broader perspective and um, and the uh, and the new technology and new challenges this is something what you, you we can have and what we can see in the program on which uh, which 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 is published and which uh, which uh, most of the uh, people work on so interdisciplinary uh, what was said impact and implementation and the topic which is very important for the european and polish policy Thank you very much uh, for, for this. I think I will have a very uh, short question. I'm not sure if it's an easy one to Maria about the budget. Um, I mean, we can understand that this is bigger than the Horizon uh, Europe uh, from from what we uh, heard uh, as, as, as till now. Uh, but one question is, uh, what's the budget for the partnerships from Horizon Europe, actually? And do you have any general overview maybe of, on the uh, commitments uh, from uh, different stakeholders to those initiatives already. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the question. So on the budget, what is important to consider is that in Horizon Europe uh, regulation, there was a budget capping put to partnerships. Uh, and it says basically that in pillar two, um, uh, the majority uh, of the budget should go to open or traditional cause, which uh, you can translate this that uh, maximum 49.9% of Pillar 2 budget can go to European partnerships. So that is the, the broader context. Um, and the situation that we have currently is that around 40% of uh, Pillar 2 will go to the partnerships uh, in the first strategic plan which is uh, logical because we want to launch the majority of partnerships already now because we have all these urgent challenges that we need to address and we want to see uh, results um, uh, already by the end of Horizon uh, uh, and, and 2030. So that's one aspect. We now, you see, have also a little bit of a margin because there will be a second strategic plan uh, and the decision of what uh, will be the priorities then and also, um, in case there is any uh, political will, let's say, uh, to uh, launch any uh, other partnerships, uh, then we do have this, um, let's say, 10% uh, to do that. But uh, that discussion will be then in, in due time. The first stretch is uh, from 21 to 24. Uh, and in terms of uh, commitments, um, when we talk about partnerships with uh, the private uh, sector, um, with the co program, the Article 184, 187, um, there um, the, the usual principle is uh, matching, so the union contribution is matched by the partners. A um, uh, specific case are the co-funded European partnerships, where also Joanna was talking about the clean energy transition. There, uh, the usual um, uh, funding rate of the union is 30%, so member states are actually putting in 70% uh, in, in most cases, so you can already uh, see the ratio. Um, yeah, and, and the commitment letters we have received uh, from uh, both the private sector for the future joint undertakings, also for the clean aviation, uh, and also from, from the member states, and, and these are um, overall very bold and, uh, and, and amazing. Uh, it's, it just shows uh, this common will to really invest in this uh, green and digital, digital transitions. And maybe last remark, uh, we also have a person here from Photonics, uh, which is a co-program partnership. So there, uh, the partners take their commitment at the moment when they sign the Memorandum of Understanding and the signature event happens in June. Back to you, Eva. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, we are slowly running out of time. I just quickly checked the, the chat, but I see that my colleagues are answering over there. So uh, I will leave this uh, uh, to, to them, I think, and use this last uh, moments for a uh, very one, uh, very, very one, very quick uh, one question to, um, uh, to all of you. Uh, how to start? Like just imagine that you just now heard for the first time about um, uh, about partnerships. Uh, uh, what shall shall you do? 
uh, and we can maybe start uh, with uh, Adam. All right. Uh, for for uh, for the partnership uh, for Photonics partnership, we have a, a website uh, uh, photonics twenty one dot org, uh, and uh, and there is a, a, a form to, to fill out uh, to, to 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 become a member, and then uh, you just can uh, can be a part of uh, of our group. You want to be more involved, or there are even uh, even further. Uh, ways to to uh, join the meetings, work groups, edit edit uh, different documents, uh, write the reports. Uh, so lots of, lots of activities are, are open. Uh, uh, referring to the budget, uh, I would like to say that uh, uh, for photonics we have a leverage of uh, six uh, six euros to every public euro uh, invested in the in the private sector. So. Uh, so I'm I'm really waiting for the numbers to, to come out about the budget of photonics. That's uh, that's really something that uh, bothers us uh, whether there will be a critical mass of all uh, development of new, new photonics product or not. So uh, okay, we had the very good, good numbers earlier, but uh, we'll see what uh, what uh, what will happen. We ask for for uh, okay. uh, at least budget. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, and just a very short uh, uh, statement, please, uh, maybe now from, from Joanna. Okay, and I think that first of all, in this case, we, as a, from the point of view of science, just to uh, try to promote your research in, in good papers that somebody find you and to have a good laboratory and network. So, for example, AGH in last day signed the agreement in Minkinia for the renewable energy big laboratory with the regional authority with other institutions. So, they uh, the, the uh, development of, of new solution. The second uh, point is which is very important, it's networking and uh, to be on Polish, we have very good experience in the cluster, waste management and recycling cluster, which is key national cluster in Poland. We have two InnoSoup projects the uh, European Horizon 2020 funded. So for SME, I think networking uh, and clustering uh, and uh, such cooperation is, is very important. And in case of the university, this is the mm, networking on the European and worldwide level. And of course, to, to go to the web page and uh, to be with us on such a meetings like this, we have also good national contact points so everybody can find the information. Thanks a lot. Uh, and Jerzy, now uh, last words from you. Uh, the first uh, will be open, will be open uh, for the uh, founding, uh, the partners to prepare the uh, proposal, the good proposal, uh, because um, it is very difficult uh, to win the competition if we prepare uh, uh, this proposal only in the uh, national con consortium. It is very important uh, to, to uh, find the uh, partner with uh, other countries uh, which can experience uh, and also uh, it is uh, uh, well uh, way to find the partner in Poland but uh, maybe this partner with the experience um, uh, give them the chance to, to build the network with the other uh, partner to build the international uh, co uh, consortium. And uh, be open to start in the call because uh, now the, 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 the my topic will be realized by the calls by the competition and this typical okay. uh, way in in the in the clean uh, aviation Okay. Thanks a lot. Uh, thanks a lot for for your insights. And uh, yes, we approach the the end of the of the session now. And I would like to thank you very much for all your insights and comments and information from uh, from you. And it was a pleasure to discuss uh, this topic with with all of you. And uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, I I really hope that you know a bit more about the partnerships, uh, and that we manage uh, to encourage you to take this opportunity and to enter somehow the horizon with a slightly different 
which are now wide open for the new new partners also also from from Poland and this is a really a perfect tool to implement your RNI strategies that you have in your companies or research institutions and to get an access to the latest trends as you had in the field of research and economy and to become truly international so thank you once again uh, to all of you and see you at our other events and hopefully also in Brussels at the NCBR office where we are waiting for you. Goodbye, stay healthy and also have a nice uh, weekend and a lot of successes in Horizon Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eva.
Ladies and gentlemen, dear viewers, dear guests uh, who have been here with us today, of course, as viewers, but also as participants. We are very happy and very proud to be able to organize Horizon Europe launch conference entitled Europe, the Horizon of Possibilities. I hope you paid attention, I hope you made notes, because this way it's going to last longer, because unfortunately, everything that is good must eventually come to an end. Right now it is time for closing remarks. Agnieszka Ratajczak, Director of the Office of International Cooperation, National Centre for Research and Development. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's conference is coming to a close, so let me briefly summarise its key points and underline some of the pivotal outcomes of panel discussions. But first of all, let me convey our gratitude to all the speakers, panelists and moderators who agreed to join us in this special event and present their thoughts on some of the most important aspects of Horizon Europe. Many thanks to all the conference participants. Your presence here is greatly appreciated. We don't see each other, unfortunately, in these new circumstances as we would normally do. But you must know, ladies and gentlemen, that we've heard more than 2,000 registrations to this conference. That's really an impressive number. Thank you very much for that. And now, as to challenges. For Poland, of course, the biggest challenge remains the scale of our participation in the framework programme. Poland has been improving its statistics from programme to programme, 85 percent improvement in Horizon 2020 compared to FP7. But I think it is blatantly obvious to all of us that Poland has not been using its full potential as far as our participation is concerned. We can and we will do better than that. We've heard about plans to use synergies on many different levels and how to better assist Polish institutions in the application process. We will surely work on barriers that were listed by panelists in the opening session. Now, on missions and clusters, highly important tackling global challenges and serving the European Union to continue on the path of green and sustainable development and taking into consideration, in case of missions, the involvement of the society Areas such as climate change, energy, mobility and food, key technologies and increased, increased industrial competitiveness are at the core of Pillar 2 activities. Also, budget-wise, more than 50% of total Horizon Europe budget. On the European Innovation Council and European Innovation Ecosystems, Pillar 3 being a key novelty in Horizon Europe and foreseeing a number of instruments and initiatives to support breakthrough technologies and game-changing innovations to create new markets and scale up internationally. All of that in order to make Europe a front-runner in innovation. We've heard today on opportunities for innovators, but also on barriers that they may come across while developing their innovations and seeking market exposure. Widening, a wide portfolio of current horizontal instruments with the goal to enhance excellence of research institutions in widening countries, such as, for example, Poland, but also to enhance their visibility on the European scale. The impact of widening instruments can be strengthened, as it has been pointed out today, while using synergies with other European funds. Teaming for Excellence, one of Poland's success stories from Horizon 2020. The upcoming call for proposal will be open in May with a budget of 180 million euros. The three winning projects from Poland in Horizon 2020 stand as a proof that success is feasible. To receive a cumulative funding of up to 30 million euros per project is a highly demanding but worthwhile endeavour. As to partnerships, which have been brought to life to address some of, Europe's, some of Europe's most pressing challenges through concerted 
research and innovation activities. They are a key implementation tool of Horizon Europe, with the aim to contribute significantly to achieving European Union political objectives, to deliver on global challenges and to modernize industry. We are all aware that partnerships have replaced Euronet co-funds and other initiatives from Horizon 2020. They have been significantly reduced in number by at least a half, but at the same time expanded in scope and budget. They are to take approximately 25% of total Horizon Europe budget and up to 50% of Pillar 2 budget. Applying the potential of partnerships will constitute a grand challenge, not only for Poland, but also for other countries individually. More important, I guess, is to see how this joint effort of Member States, the European Commission, along with substantial budgets, thoroughly discussed and agreed upon strategic research and innovation agenda of individual partnerships, will serve Europe in the long run. Ladies and gentlemen, horizon of opportunities is ahead of us, ahead of Polish universities, institutes and enterprises. It is entirely up to us, or I should probably say it is entirely up to you, how you will use these seven years, tools, instruments and possibilities offered by the programme. The National Centre for Research and Development and its national contact point for Horizon Europe is here to assist you throughout the process. Do use this opportunity. Finally, I'd like to invite each and every one of you to a series of information days and workshops entitled Teaching Sklastrami, which starts on Monday and will be carried out throughout next week and will be devoted to all six clusters from Pillar 2. These, of course, will be online events to which you can register either through the web page of the National Contact Point or through our social media. Now, I'd like to wish everybody a nice afternoon. Please stay tuned and, above all, stay healthy. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for such an amazing closing. Ladies and gentlemen, nowadays rarely do we have a chance to meet in uh, such company. And this is the reason why I would like to thank the organizer for creating this conference, thank the moderators and our guests for sharing their knowledge. And I would like to thank you, our viewers, for staying with us till the very end. Horizon Europe is in its beginning stage, but I do believe and I do hope that in the years to come we'll be all together able to change the world for the better. Until the next time then.